baby gang 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 baby pop the top and let it spread as we're listening to pastor gray we're going fishing for your bitch today we're drunk in houston eh? and we go ahead and lick and we'll get rich today rich bitch Episode 557, Happy Gravy Day, everybody. It's Alex, Patsy, and Robert the Hog Barbosa holding things down for you today. We're going to get mad with you today. It's March Madness. We're kicking that off. We're going to do a mock draft of things. Uh, we're not, not of things that make us mad. Just a mock draft of mad. Mm-hmm. I think we've done three variations of something with mad and mock draft. So we're just doing a mock draft of mad. All things bad. We've been doing this a we'll, while, you know. We'll get to that. We'll get, yeah, we have been. We're running out of ideas, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. And we got all kinds of stuff. We're going to answer your questions, tell you what's not cool. Pat and me hung out. We have a, a shared not cool that we'll get to. But I have to start the pod with a very important question that I need your answer on right now. And that is Should you have eaten all of your Valentine's Day candy that's been given to you by now? Yeah. It's a month and a week. Yeah. If not, next question is, is it fair game for the person that gave you Valentine's Day candy to eat that Valentine's Day candy? A hundred percent. So what I'm guessing here is Emma has not finished her candy and you want it. Didn't even open it. Didn't even open Oh, it's dude. Didn't it's all for you. Open then. it. Because, and, and if she tried to pull a, Hey, I'm pregnant. I need candy around thing. Be like, I'll get you more candy. I'll go, this is I'll old candy. It. This is old candy. We need to get rid of the old candy before. We accidentally eat it yeah, when it's too okay. old. You're just looking out for her and the baby, dude. Exactly. I care. I don't want her to eat old candy. I got her those little the little Russell Stover heart box. And it, like I was looking at something in my cat and I was like, wait, this doesn't even have the plastic off. And then I was kind of like, I want chocolate. So I just ripped the plastic off and ate half of it. Yeah. Which is crazy. I've never seen one of those heart boxes last more than like three days. I don't think Emma likes the, like, she doesn't like anything with, like, peanuts and stuff in it. So I think she's always worried that, like, that might be in it. Even though, like, I specifically found one without, it was, like, no nuts. I was like, perfect. Crushed it. Didn't even want it. So I ate that. That was part of my lunch today. I had that, and I had a spaghetti sandwich. I'm bringing back Fuck yeah. sandwiches. Emma made spaghetti on Monday. So the last two days, guess what lunch is? Spaghetti sandwiches, dude. Fuck I want yeah, one dude. so bad. I saw Dude, Maddie Matheson make one on best. Instagram the other day, and I can't say. Did you? You gotta. You gotta like. You gotta put it in the fridge so it gets hard. Cut it into a square, batter it, and fry it, and then eat that as a sandwich. Fried, is fucking so, sick, dude. I didn't do that, but what I did do is I'm a hoagie roll sandwich guy exclusively oh, yeah. now. I've I've gotten rid of just a loaf of bread. I'm a I'm a bougie bitch, and I need the dollar ninety nine six pack of hoagie rolls. So I'll have peanut butter and jellies long ways if I want to. It's fancy. So I was just like, you know what? Would go great with spaghetti, garlic bread. Don't have garlic bread, but I do have a hoagie roll. And I just put garlic salt on it, toasted it for like three minutes, and then put the spaghetti in there, heated it up. It was great. Like I was eating fucking at an Italian restaurant. Wait, was it garlic salt or garlic seasoning? Garlic, whatever, whatever the garlic is in my, my pantry. Okay, probably just garlic seed. I was gonna say garlic salt. That's not. It's still not really garlic bread. But uh, if there's garlic on the bread, it is garlic bread. I mean, at a base level, yes. But if you ordered garlic bread at a restaurant, and they brought out bread with garlic salt on it. You'd be like, I mean, okay, but you can't charge me five dollars for this. I want to start rating things like everything is a boomerang. Everything is a ladle, whether or not it's a good ladle or a good boomerang. That's up for debate. Every kind of bread is garlic bread. A lot of it is just really, really shitty garlic bread. Humpernickel bread, trash garlic bread. Not any garlic on there. That's not good garlic bread. Oh, you gotta have some garlic to be a good garlic bread. My you're garlic bread, to... I would say, is like a three on the scale of ten of garlic bread. You're you're obsessed with if are things something or are they not? You're ju- at this point, you're just doing the meme of that guy saying that everything in the universe either is or is not a potato. Pretty much, yeah. You're like, and you're like, well, yeah, I fucking guess, but 
remember we did Marlin meter for home runs. It was like, is that Darlin or is that Darlin like a Marlin? And I was like, send I me mean, the home you runs. Did that. Well, I tried to do that for a little bit. I just <laughs> want to do like a garlic bread meter. Like send me your bread. And I'm like, yeah, it's about a two on the garlic bread meter scale. It doesn't yeah, even have would, garlic on it. That's a zero. It's a zero. You'd be better off just doing bread ratings. People send you pictures of bread and you rate their bread. Yeah, but other people probably have that. But it'd be funnier to just do garlic ratings on bread. Like garlic bread ratings for all bread. Zero. Have you ever Not have you ever garlic. just like actually chopped up garlic and like used like chunks of garlic toasted on the bread as garlic bread? That's Shut elite bougie shit, dude. I'll have to do that maybe this weekend. Or like cook your uh, garlic long enough to where it becomes just spreadable. And then you spread that on the bread and eat it with olive oil. That'd be sick. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to get fat. Don't worry. There we go. Um, what else did I have for us this this week? Um, I'm glad I'm glad you guys agreed with me on the Valentine's Day candy because I felt. A month is an egregious amount of time. Like, it's been there. It's been there. And I did eat half of it, but I'm gonna eat the rest of it tonight. Then I I would have left the other half, but tonight, like when I'm editing this, I'm gonna eat the rest of it. I'm just future whoever's listening to this know that it's gone while you're listening to this. Awesome. That whole box is gone. Proud of you. Um, I heard somebody using the uh, phrase, they you know what they were talking about their kids dance, and they were like, yeah, made sure that they left a little room for Jesus, and they were talking about it sarcastically. But do you remember in middle school and high school dances, like when they would come and they'd separate you and be like, you have to be this far away. Leaving room for Jesus. I forgot that like some people had said that, that that used to be like a phrase for it. We need to just bring you like leaving room for Jesus for whenever there's a space anywhere. Like somebody's got a, like Michael Strahan has a lot of room for Jesus in his mouth. Guy dies to the end zone and is down at the half yard line. Uh Ah, shouldn't have left room for Jesus. And it looks like there's a little too too much room for Jesus on that. It's fourth and inches. Swung over the top of that curveball, left a little room for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> there's way too much room for Jesus on that when, like, the asshole leaves, like, 12 car lengths between you. Oh, and the next car. don't get me started. It's always when you try and turn left and they're on the other line. They're like, just ooch up, dude. What are you doing? You're, like, walking through a crowded bar, and it's, like, not enough room for you to get through, and you tap on the shoulder, like, hey, can you leave a little room for Jesus as you're sliding through? A little room for Jesus. That makes it seem, like, wholesome, too. Make a little room for Jesus instead of, like, get the fuck out of my way. It makes it sound like you're calling yourself Jesus. But Which I haven't ruled out that I might be. It's a non-zero possibility. True. If I I die this year at 33 because some Romans killed me, there's a good chance I was Jesus. That's true. If Robert betrays you at your final supper. At two, Bobby. Maybe, oh, wait, no, that's maybe Caesar. Jesus. Well, they were cousins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that new, soon? The Ides of March? I think it was the 15th. Is that what Ide means? I have I I've looked it up before and it's just one of those things where the information won't stay with me. I'm not a big Ides guy myself, actually. Yeah, I think Ides is a little young. Usually you gotta go a little bit older than 18 or 15. Probably go a little older than 18 too, just to be safe. Ides means the middle of each month. It's literally the 15th. Fuck. All right. <sighs> or hey, February, it's the 14th. We learned Roman today. The Ides of Gravy. Everybody. Everything comes back to the Roman Empire. God damn it. it. always does. That's us just thinking about it constantly. Ladies, like, we're not, what are you talking about? This podcast would not even really start without talking about the Roman Empire today. Jesus. Look at them. Uh, enjoy the Ides of Gravy today. Uh, but yeah, let's leave some, let's leave a little room for Jesus. Let's bring that back. Not by bringing that back, but just like, let's really force that into our lingo. Go Maybe I should have to say, leave a little room for Buddha when I'm walking through things. Just because I'm fat. Buddha was a big boy. Like if Kids Bop had to do the ludicrous move, bitch, get out the way, it would be leave room for Jesus. That would probably be how they would edit it. <laughs> I'm trying to That's think of how it would very go. Very southern. Kid. It's very southern, though. Like it's just a bless your heart. Leave a little room for Jesus. Let's get the fuck out of my way. Hey, hey y'all hey, make hey, sure hey. you need some room for Jesus. Don't be assholes. 
Which I, I think it's hilarious that it's just a euphemism for middle schoolers to not touch genitals. Not grinding. You know, with clothing in the way. Leave room for Jesus. Hog. You could not keep the hog away in those uh those middle school dances for Bobby. Bobby was like, sorry, I'm trying. Top I mean, you could leave room for room, Jesus and you'd still can. touch it. Yeah. He's like, I'm doing everything I can. I am doing everything. That's why he got kicked out of middle school. He's a bad boy. True. No middle school would take him. <laughs> he was a nomad for those three years from fifth grade to, to ninth grade. Get With a school of hard school. knocks. <laughs> That's really what it was. Street smarts. He showed up to high school. He's like, I'm the hog. So, oh, damn. <laughs> 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 What'd you guys bring in? Sorry. <laughs> I uh, I think fat boys are having a moment. So, which means I'm having a moment and I'm all, I'm all for it. Uh, Dan Schneider? No, not 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 Dan Schneider. No, not him. Uh, I mean, he, I guess he's having a moment, not the same kind of Ryan good Peck. moment. Daily but uh, oh. <laughs> during uh, Philly's spring training game, they were interviewing Jose Alvarado, who's one of their pitchers, and he's a big boy. And they asked him if, uh, you know, having big legs, how much success do you think that that leads to for him on the mound? And he said, bro, I just feel like a fat boy. I'm fucking fat. And I was like, you know what? I love it. We're owning it now. It's fat boycism. I'm declaring it right now, fat boycism. We're going to have a moment. It's not not even – I'm talking like past dad bod. We're not talking we're, – we're talking big boys. So all you skinnies, like you and Robert, you guys need to sit the fuck down. And let me, Mundo, all of us. It's it, it's it, it's fat boy season, and we're we're gonna have our time. I even went sexy with se- jersey, not buttoned up, I just like chest that. hair out. I do feel like fat boy season. season maybe fat boy be, summer. Yeah, fat boy summer needs to be around for sure. And I think that like the dad bod craze really got hijacked by not myself. Not myself, because you obviously myself and Robert are in peak physical condition. We're the ideal male bodies. But a lot of people just were like, oh, I got a dad bod. And it was like, well, that doesn't just like, dad bod was a thing at one point. And then it was just like, I'm not ripped, so I have a dad bod. That's what it became. And it was like, I think that took away yeah, that was from crap. the bigger guys. It took away from bigger guys. It's like, no, no, no. He's not He's not chubby. He's just got dad bod. Like, that's, that's what gave... A guy, the argument that I'm not chubby, I'm not fat. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but like it was like other people tried to take that culture from you, and I'm glad that you're taking it back now, Pat. Yeah, and you know what? Just to bring it back to the Roman Empire, it's going to be like back then when the fatter you were, it was a status symbol. Mm -hmm. You were robust. By 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 the end of the summer, it's going to be like I'm going to be hanging out with like Rick Ross and Fat. Wait, hold on, Fat Joe's not fat anymore, is he? But he, we, so it's gonna be name is fat Joe. You know, it'll be me and Jelly Roll, and we're just gonna be hanging out, having a fucking great time. You know, else lost weight is Kelly Clarkson. Oh, Zempic. Oh, really? I I assume so, dude. Wait, how? Dude, there was a bunch. Can we just talk about? Can we just talk about how much we love Kelly? Like, how much do we love Kelly? Some people wait a lifetime. For a moment like this. And that the moment with came. Drew Barrymore. I thought that's who you're talking about. Oh, don't you dare. Kelly could run circles around Drew Barrymore. Well, now, d- different lanes. Drew's an actress. Kelly's a singer, okay? don't uh, Both the talk show hosts and Kelly is way better. Drew Barrymore was a talk show host? Yeah. It's on like some streaming station that nobody watches. Oh, that doesn't count. Yeah, it does. She says you're gonna be on actual us. like fucking TV. I think Maybe he he's is. streaming. He just said he was streaming. The cry stream somewhere. It, I mean, it's probably also, also streaming. <laughs> also, I'll always give mad respect to Drew Barrymore because she was fucking crazy, dude. Didn't she show Kelly, David Letterman Kelly her Clarkson, tits? I don't know. Kelly Clarkson just a sweetheart. I'm pretty sure Drew Barrymore when she was like 18 years old. Went on David Letterman and spun around and flashed her tits at him. She was a fucking wild one, and that's super hot. Didn't she date Corey Feldman? I hope so. And married 
Tom Green. See, all of these things track toward her being crazy, which yeah. Well, Kelly Clarkson married me this kid, and then I think he fucked her over in a divorce. Oh, I was like, fucking really? I didn't yeah. know that. I don't know. Look at me knowing look music at, we're, royalty. We're just a couple of gossiping hens over here, but Kelly just guys just talking pop culture, you know? Hey, who From... doesn't like if, if if you're not with the Clark son, get out of here. Fifteen-year-old you know pop culture. We're finally catching around to it. Uh, no, Kelly is in the news still. I think I saw her on some show the other day. Yeah, because she like, looks That's great. Kelly Clarkson, she looks great. Not that she did but it before. I, I'm it's just saying, now. but like when her. all of a sudden all these happy. celebrities suddenly have lost a shit ton of weight and she lost a bunch of weight, you just have to go. That's a Zempic. Well, and did you notice that Oprah just came out with a hey, let's get away with the stigma of weight loss? It's like because you just got in trouble for. Doing Ozempic when you push Weight Watchers forever. And I was like, how did, oh. Yeah, you have to disclose that. And hey, look, there's not a stigma for fast weight loss, but we don't know the side effects too necessarily. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. As long as we can get away from just defending every fatty for being a fatty. Like, I, I, the fact that Southwest is like, yeah, if you're fat as shit, you can just have two plane tickets now. Or two plane seats. It's like, yeah, but you just bump someone off the flight because somebody doesn't know how to fucking put down a sandwich. Yeah. Stop yeah, normalizing but... being a fat fatty. I don't do it. I just am. Well, I thought we. I thought we were normalizing it. No, 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 no. I said fat, fat boys. Season. Fat boys are having a season. I'm not saying it's good to be fat, but it's uh... it's 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 a it's, it's you know we'll call it fat boy summer. We're gonna have the whole summer. Okay. Because it is that season. When it's that season, you just kind of say summer. It's Fat Boy Summer. All right. We're all going to be fucking topless at the pools. No more t-shirts, Fat Boys. Let's do this. And we are including women in Fat Boy Summer, but we would never call you fat. Just know that. Because we're gentlemen. No, it's Fat Boy Summer. This is for the Fat Boys. Well, and for the women, too. But they we can have, call you fat. They can have, we're they not going to call you fat because we're gentlemen. They, they can have big girl fall, okay? The summer's for the boys. It is winter, Women's Appreciation Month, so we can't really. It is exclude them, man. Women's History I made, Month, maybe. I made it two thirds of the way through the month without even knowing that. Yeah. They, so, so, which means, ladies, you need to fucking up your marketing because that's. I had no idea. I mean, if you think we weren't telling everybody it was manual, nobody listened, but we told everybody. Yeah, because men know how to somebody, brand. For the first time ever, I get to tell somebody to shut the fuck up. And that they had manuary, and he did not know what I was talking about. But he was like, everybody's got a stupid mother. You had manuary in January. You shut up. This is the women's month. Don't. I want to hear a complaint. It's like, he was not talking to me directly, and it just blew him away. That that was what <laughs> triggered me. I was like, no, 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 no. You had manuary. And I said with a straight face. He didn't even really respond. So he just walked away. I was like, I won that game. Probably was what texting his buddies later. Like, this fucking live yelled at me about manuary. Boys, now, did you know about Manuary? We're celebrating next year. That was right after I filled out my Women's March Madness bracket first. FYI, also an allied move. Yeah, yeah, I filled out the free men's one, and they're like, do you want to do the free women's one? You can win a car. And I was like, nope. I did. I put my girl Caitlin Clark all in the title game. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, though, in a little bit. Uh, Robert, what'd you bring back for uh, the pre camp segment? The fact that this is once again a dog free home. Well, if you hadn't killed the dog, it would have been a little bit funnier. <laughs> yeah, with your fucking Ted Bundy jacket that you're wearing. Yeah, dude. I don't know who that is. It's just in the Dahmer glasses he had on before. Took them right off. Evan Peters, yeah, who, I... who, who was that? Who did he play? Dahmer? Did he? Dahmer. Yeah. Is that Michael's nephew? Yeah, Michael Peters? Not... Who the fuck is Michael, Michael Peters? Scott's nephew. Yeah, yeah I don't means... know. From the, I don't know the oh, oh, shit. I think that is him. It is him. They played Dahmer. I just, like, that's played... how I know who the guy that played Michael's nephew in the office. That's Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't know his name. He was Quicksilver in one of the, I think it was one of the X Men movies. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I never made that connection with the office until right now. Yeah, Michael spanks him. Well, he deserved it. Well, he did. He was being a fuckhead. Can't do that in the workplace. Can't do that in the workplace. 
Yeah. Did you see that the, um, they're going to make a new office show? Not like a reboot, but like it's set in the same universe. I'd fuck with that. I don't know if it'd be another Dunder Mifflin or it'd be like another company. I wouldn't hate, honestly, if it was Dunder Mifflin, but it was just like, what's going on now? Like, I thought that. A lot oh, of no, dude. Hated... Save, Save by the Bell, the new class really sucked. Yeah, I like to go. Like, I'm not gonna say I'd love it. I wouldn't like it as much, obviously. But I'm gonna go into it, and be like, "That's cool. I'll, I'll see more from the same universe." You, you guys fucking watch every superhero movie that's just like, "Well, this is like the 35th installment of the Iron Man, guys." So really, this is after Spider Man Two, before Spider Man Three, and yeah, after Pat. Avengers Two, and before this, and that's after Thor meets Ragnarok yeah, they... and does this with Batman, and and it's this. It's like if the, if you're like, yeah, this is also just Dunder Mifflin later, but okay, tight. Yeah, but they didn't take I'm a fifteen-year break in between. Remember how good Zoolander two was and Anchorman two? Yeah, taking ten years off and then making the movie is not a good idea. Anchorman two was not bad. We still hate Boondock it. Saints two. I loved it. Not a good movie. It was very bad actually. But here, here, if they're gonna do it, they should just do like a different office building in Scranton, and they still go to Kevin's bar. Like every once in a while, they just stop by Kevin's and like, don't even give him a line. Just have him like bartending in the background. It's just like a wink to the audience. Apparently the the co-creator of Nathan for you is going to be involved in the project. I'm going to love that. So it's going to be like I... season one of the office where it's really cringy shit again. Okay. I hope so. Give us a little bit of that. But I thought that the final seasons of the office got a lot of unnecessary hate just because Steve Carell wasn't in them. I think that Will Ferrell's character arc was funny. I've watched it a million times, so I learn more and more each time I go back and watch it. And like, I don't think they're as bad as everybody made them out to be. And then the final season, you get um, you get plop, and you get uh, <laughs> what's his face? Uh, you get uh, Dwight Junior. You get Dwight Junior. Yeah, he guys. was funny. Plop wasn't the, funny. I don't think I he was okay, were. but but, but they, they were Dwight still Jr. Showing... was better. But show me that they still could add new characters and like make it entertaining because I was still entertained by them. And like, if you just throw them in that office setting where people are doing pranks on each other and shit like that, I think you could play with the like uppityness I think everybody kind of has now about like, oh, I was a little too far. Like, Michael would be getting in trouble for things that he didn't get in trouble for then. Like, that would be kind of funny to watch and navigate around that. And then just to have Easter eggs, honestly, would be really, really would be the best part for me. You could have all the, if you still had the old office, you could just have like the little parts where like, oh, Dwight was here and it was just something that somebody found. They find a ninja star hidden in a wall or some shit like that. I don't know. I'm really overthinking this. I'm fine. As long as they but just, I'd be down with really, it. really the worst part of the final seasons was just that they ruined Andy. They spent all the that time on Andy's character arc. Well, no, you could have just had him leave. Don't have him just ruin the relationship with Aaron. That sucked. Yeah, I think there was just like a lot of overlap. So they're like, ah, okay, he's not going to be here to film here. Let's just uh, write him out this way. But yeah, I mean, don't get, I'll watch. This feels like it's probably going to be a Peacock exclusive thing. I don't know why. That's just gut feeling with yeah. no details about it. But I'll watch. Robert, um, what did you do when the dog was gone first? What was your first move post dog? Were you just like, open all the early? doors? You left everything everywhere, threw it all on the floor. Yeah, open all the doors. Like his office door is now open too, because we couldn't trust it being alone. And he ripped up part of our wall. <laughs> Pro well, if you had given him some love and attention, that wouldn't have happened. Great point. You got plenty of it. Uh, not from you. From Sam. Not from you. But yeah, yeah but not from the me. one he wanted. Pat, pat. Hello. Pat, Here's pat, a pat. pat on the head. You will love it. No, no. Sorry, dog. I touched you yesterday. You're going to have to wait till tomorrow. All right. Well, that was our pre-camp segment, guys. Solid. Solid all around, everybody. Uh, let's move on to the Comeback Kids segment brought to you by the Pass the Gravy merch store. <laughs> Head over to PassTheGravyMerch.com. We do still have St. Patty's Day stuff up there. But you get that for next year. Get it early. Get some... Uh, get some of the new tie dye hats we got. I was hanging, we were hanging with Mikey P. Pat and I went to the Sabercats game over the weekend, and uh, our buddy Mikey P was out there and he was rocking his past the gravy stuff. Ashley was rocking her It's April Fool Somewhere shirt. I still have mine right here. I have my, my other one I have here. Um, you can get that past the gravy merch.com. 
Uh, we got two different kinds of the tie dye hats. We have the new PTG dad hats that have it says Pass Great Podcast on there instead of just the logo. Mikey was also wearing the PTG icy shirt. Get the Ja 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 one, the trash bag one, or the gravy thank you bag, the PTG MTV logo one, and then the shorts. The shorts are awesome. They're like sweatpants, but just shorts. I wear them around the house all the fucking time. And it's cool with your favorite podcast branded on them. So go check it out. Pass the gravy merch.com. Support the podcast that way. We don't ever ask you guys. Just give us money outright. If you want to support the podcast, we give you everything for free. Oh, yeah. Just go buy some merch. It helps us out. And it gives you something cool to wear. Pass the gravy merch.com. Get your gear. Take a picture of you wearing it at Pass Gravy Pod on Twitter, on Instagram. Let us know you're supporting the show. Uh, we'll retweet you a picture. We'll tag you. We'll give you a, a, a shout out on the podcast. Pass the gravy merch.com. Get you some of the best podcast merch on the planet. Pass the gravy merch.com. The official sponsor of the Comeback Kids segment. It's the comeback kid. The comeback kid of the week. The comeback kid of the week. Bitch. All right. Our first comeback kid this week is tattoos because somebody did it, Pat. Somebody finally did it. Shout out to David Ruiz at David underscore Ruiz 90 on Twitter. He became the first person ever to get a pass you tattoo i will send you the picture if you want to put it up on the youtube version robert but he got a Sick. tattoo it's the ptg logo in the state of texas i am a man of my word i said when somebody else gets a pass to get tattoo i will then go get one pat also lost a bet where he had to pay for my tattoo and get one so we're going to get tattoos so bad let's uh, yeah let's, let's work on that in the next couple weeks getting that done i might just get a sleeve let's get a whole sleeve I think I'm going to do it like on the, the thigh right here to where when you wear like, you know, the short ba- uh, like swimsuits or whatever, they kind of just poke out just the bottom. Yeah. You Somewhere in that area. On. Either that or on my shoulder. I don't know. You want to just do teardrop? No, not on the face. I don't I don't think my employer would be too happy with me walking around the restaurant with a face hat. What was a black light teardrop tattoo that only shows up in black light? Then it's going to just look like somebody came our logo on my face. Even funnier. That is a good point. That is funny. It is very funny. I don't know. I'm so white. I feel like black, black light ink would still show up on my face. It might. It might. Robert, where are you getting yours? Uh, That's a good question. I haven't really uh, decided yet. Still on the fence between maybe doing like a, you know, teardrop. Uh, face or you go mike tyson just like yeah. pull on like right by the eye right there yeah i was thinking or maybe like shaving like part of my head and just getting it there i love that. what if what if you just get ptg tattooed on your upper lip but a bunch of times really small so it just looks like a mustache well, if you get it but you get ptg tattooed a bunch of times and like really small font to where it just says ptg in a big font but it's just made with a bunch of little ptgs Ooh, that'd be cool and painful probably yeah i almost got a yankees tattoo on my lip one time decided against it you, you know, just had to have them in your mouth huh well they have that uh like script that that like cursive font mm-hmm. and i was like oh that'd be sick just right there but yeah it also and, fades yeah that was really what got me to not do like yeah it'll probably get you'll have to get it redone in like five years I'm out. And then like anything on your hand and shit like that, like it just fades and rubs away and shit like that. So yeah, that, that was a, that was an, a no go on that. I'm jacked up. Yeah. I'm ready I'm to do this. Jacked too, dude. And also, I like uh, go down a wormhole and get a lot of tattoos. I really think like I've been hankering. I got like four or five ideas I want to get. And I think I, I might just be like, Hey, also do this too. Do this. Other what is round. the, what is, what is the how much do you tip or do you tip on tattoos i think you do right you do yeah is this just like a regular 20 percent thing um i think for ours it may be because it's like again this is me who doesn't like i've only had stenciled tattoos so they're like i haven't been like hey i've been thinking of like a piece 
you know, to honor my grandfather. Well, yeah, stencil tape. Like I figured we would get in this. Like, we're gonna walk in with a logo and be like, "Hey, I want this on me here," and they're gonna go make the little temporary thing of it, put it on us, and then do that. Like, we're not gonna get anybody to design a tattoo. And right. I think that's when you really have to tip a lot. I think you still tip. Like I've tipped on all mine, but like I, okay, I, I just, like I've never had dollar tattoos that I tipped twenty dollars on. Yeah, that's I figured our tattoos would probably be like fifty bucks, like each, maybe. Yeah, probably something around that. Probably yeah, around yeah. that. I mean, inflation. So probably yeah, like it's probably gonna be more than forty for the two of us. I would imagine one forty, one twenty. Yeah, something like that. Look at us. Making adult decisions, going to get tattoos. If anyone wants to go get and tattoos then with us, you can. We should take bets on whether or not mine gets infected for not taking care of it properly. Oh, um, if it's your first tattoo, at least when I got mine, they were really good about scaring the fuck out of me of like how bad it could be if it got infected. And I got the the balm and all like whatever that shit was. Um, I can't remember what it, what it was called, but I had like that like ointment you had to put over it all the time. Didn't you just use like Vaseline? Uh, Vaseline, but then there is like an act, there's like better stuff for it too. I can't remember what it was. Called. I mean, it's gonna be a stencil tattoo, so it's like, right? It's not like a but piece. Like, they'll still terrify you about like, hey, if it gets infected, this could happen, and this could happen, and then if you look up infected tattoos, it's a whole scary yeah. wormhole you'll go down. Don't do that. Don't. Do I'm that. not gonna, but like, I'm also a piece of shit. So, Robert, you should just get one. Just get a tattoo. Just get, get behind tattoo. behind the ear. I think maybe like also in addition, maybe like a tooth gem. Just get it on my teeth. Oh, yeah. like just a diamond in the tooth uh-huh. or like a straight up gold tooth? No, no, no. Like like something on the tooth. I like that. Mm-hmm. Like Joe Pesci in Home Alone. Just get the gold tooth, maybe. Or no, just get a sparkly tooth right in yeah. the front. Just a little Get tooth. Robert a grill. But like only like a partial grill. It's, it's just like, like crazy. right there and it just says hog. You know how the rappers would have like the, like Nelly had the bandit on one eye, just do like the grill on just one side of your mouth. Hey. <laughs> that would be great. Perfect for people that smirk. <laughs> Laura Ingram. We'll call it the Laura Ingram grill because you only speak out of one side of your mouth, so that's all that shows. <laughs> I like that. So shout out David Ruiz. We're, uh, um, po- we'll post that up on the YouTube video, uh, and uh, we we did tweet about it last week when you got that. But you're a real one, dude. And um, I mean, gravy gangster. People are saying obviously he's got to be a front runner for that at this point in the year. Obviously, got to be up in the MVP conversation because that's a pretty MVP move. Man of the year, darling, like a Marlon. It was all those things. David Ruiz in like all of the gravies categories currently. Um. But shout out to David Ruiz. He shout might win them all. He may. Might he have, have a sweep this sweep. year. Never had that happen before, but um, who knows? Also back this week is Madness, because March Madness is officially here. How many brackets have you filled out, Robert? All of them. Uh, made sure to, the to go through them all, go through all the different conferences, fill them out, You know, see all the players, fill them out. Which region out. do you think has the best chance of having the yeah, eventual cool. national yeah. champion? Uh, definitely the America region. Let's try again. I think that 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 one's had the best think, chance. Think directions. Say say U of H is region. Uh, that definitely the region that the U U of H Cougars. And that and that would be the the Houston region. Oh my god! Uh, okay. Are you worried about Houston in the uh the tournament? No, they're gonna go all the way. They're, oh, they're. Well, uh, I mean, they're I've got them going all the way. They planted the most seeds, so they're number one. So, speaking of seed, I did have a disturbing fact I saw on the interwebs this morning. Um, I mean, I I thought I was gonna put Houston far along in my bracket. And I've made changes since then because um, every tournament since 2021, a top two seed is lost in the first round to a team with a sex sounding name, and um, 2021 oral. Roberts defeated Ohio State, who was a two seed. In 2022, St. Peter's defeated Kentucky, who was a two seed. In 2023, Fairly Dick in Sun defeated Purdue, who was a one seed. And um, this year, Houston is playing Longwood. So are you worried about that now, knowing that new stat? 
Um, <laughs> that, that is something interesting that I haven't thought about. That is that you, you bring up a very good point. You worried about the long wood possibly fucking your season. Yeah, but if there's one team that can stop this sex streak going on and beat Longwood, it would be U of H because their hand signal is just the shocker. I mean, it's spread out a little bit, but that's good, the shocker. Good counterpoint. Good point. Mm-hmm. Good, it's, it is a great counterpoint. So who, I'm just throwing that fact out there. Yeah. So that's how they'll attack. Two from right in front of them and one from behind. Right. Yep. Two from the front court, one from the back court. Yeah, but I, I, think yep. U, I think UH has planted enough seeds that they'll be able to overcome. Planted so much seed. Mm-hmm. That's why they're number one. So much seed planted. And they will overcome. Some said they overcame when they planted that much seed. A lot of people were saying that. I did hear them say that. Yeah. But that's how you win. Um, Yeah, that is exactly how you win. That's exactly how you win. Um, If you would like to participate in our March Madness bracket, we do have one of those going on right now. I believe the pot I saw is up to $600. Right now, and the top three winners are going to get paid out. We're teaming up with the Beer Sports Whatever podcast to do. Uh, I think this is the third year in a row we've done our bracket. It's through ESPN. You got to hit up Mike Brown, who's at Mike Brown underscore twenty twenty on Twitter. DM him and just be like, "Hey, I want in on the bracket challenge," and you send him twenty dollars. Uh, you can enter up to three brackets in this. Um, so you could that's sixty bucks, and you could have three different brackets in there. First, second, and third place are gonna get win are gonna get money for it. So go send your twenty dollars to Mike. Hit him up. He's at Mike underscore Brown twenty twenty or Mike Brown underscore twenty twenty on Twitter. Hit him up. Say I want to get in the past the gravy beer sports whatever bracket challenge, and he'll send you the link, and you'll be good to go. I'm about to send him my link tonight after we get done with this. Ooh. I got got a few things. Like I was I was bummed we didn't get to do a women's bracket challenge because obviously we've done that. But um, Mike Brown underscore 2020, hit him up. Say you wanted to get in the bracket challenge. You can enter up to three different brackets that are all eligible to win if you would like to get into our bracket challenge. But yeah, I did do the women's bracket first just so I could be an ally. And um, I picked UConn and I picked Iowa and I picked South Carolina, I think. So shout out to me. That's going to win. And Stanford. Stanford. She just went Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. Well, I did. I, I filled out Iowa going to the national title and winning it without filling out anything else. And then I filled in the rest of the bracket. Because I, like, I know how it goes. I, I thought you said steps. you did one UConn, one... Right. No, I no, I put UConn in the final four. Oh, well, you only named three teams. Yeah. You said South Carolina, well, UConn, Stan- and That's why I said, I said, and then Stanford. Oh, I didn't hear Stanford. the Stanford part. That's what was so me off. I was like, you named three teams. When I first saw the bracket, I was like, Iowa, 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 Iowa. Smart Iowa play. The national champion. And then I just filled in around. It's Caitlin Clark's world. We're just living. Facts. We're just living. Facts. Um, so, yeah, shout out to March Madness. And we're going to do a mock draft of MAD coming up um, after we got a couple more comeback kids because Jersey Swaps are also a comeback kid this week. All time jersey swap, maybe the greatest jersey swap of all time. Grady Dick and was it Anthony Black of the Magic did a jersey swap and it was the most just like guys being dudes ever where they went, shook each other's hand and he was like one of them leaned into the other one's ear and you could hear him just be like, yo, we should swap jerseys. We should swap jerseys. And he looked at like what the other dude looked at him, and they kind of just laughed. It was Grady like, Dick's oh. idea, so like, like, oh, of okay, course it's going to be the white guy with the dumbass idea. Well, no, the kid, the guy with the last name Dick. Yeah, yeah. Like he can do that with everybody. I loved it, and it, it was it was hilarious, and just like the, the like giggle on on Anthony Black's face, like okay, yeah, let's go do that. And then he went and got the camera guy from the Orlando Magic. He's like, yo, 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 yo. Yo, get this. We're gonna do the jersey swap, and they made sure they stood where it like lined up perfectly, and just said "black dick." Hilarious, wholesome. It was great. Guys being dudes. Dick jokes are funny every single time. Verbal meme. I hope he's probably out there cheating on me right now. Me and the boys, <laughs> just laughing at at the black dick jersey swap. That's pretty much what it is. Yo, did you see that these two dudes swap jerseys? It says "black dick." But that was every guy's group chat that night. Verbal meme, guys 
like it's the two hands clasping and one side says guys like 12 to 18 laughing and then the other side is just literally every single other guy because every guy's gonna laugh at that forever black dick is always funny guys 12 to 18 all of the other guys every other dude ever literally everyone literally like you think it's gonna be them. just all oh, young guys laughing at it because it's up no every guy laughs it's fucking funny except for maybe racists do you think jersey swaps have gotten a little like over the top at this point no i mean that one was properly used usually it's that one like played two amazing players like the two best players in the world on opposing teams they would jersey swap i don't know it's fun who gives a shit I always think with like soccer, you see it a lot more. Like people look, like, oh, yo, Messi, can I get your jersey? And they do the jersey swap. And the majority of guys, Messi's just tossing your jersey in the trash when he goes to his locker room, right? Like, I don't give a fuck about this guy's jersey. Yeah, if I was Messi, I wouldn't do the jersey swap. I just think you can have mine. When you're a big enough player, do you just, what do you do with all the ones you swap? Like, is there just a closet where they like, yeah. didn't get those framed? You're just like, sorry, dude. No, it's not a closet. Okay. It's like a memorabilia room or wing of their house for these guys that make $30 million a year and have 16 room houses. Chase Budinger, I didn't really frame yours. Sorry about that, pal. Sorry, Chandler Parsons. You didn't make the cut. Chandler Just Parsons. Pull it up bitch. jersey in the back. Yeah, fucking Chandler. I did love Chase Budinger, though. You ever you ever see his highlights of playing uh volleyball in college? Yeah. He was like a national champion volleyball player. Yeah, he was sick. Air Bud. Could jump out the fucking gym. Yeah. Shout out Chase Budinger. We should get him on the podcast. Find Chase Budinger, get him on the podcast, Robert. That's a, that's a, that's a great random name poll. Yeah, it is. Like, that's one of those names when, like, you and your buddies are just sitting around naming players from, like, the early 2010s. Somebody goes, dude, remember Chase Budinger? And every guy in the group goes, oh! oh! Von Wafer skipped to my loo! <sighs> those Chuck Wagon. Teams. The O the the O six to O nine Rockets. Louis Scola, bro, the Scola Fuck scoop. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. We could literally do this every episode. Every yeah, every every episode. Just yeah, Robert, you should just give us a team, and we'll just name guys from a, like a ra- like. Like we do this ce- random celebrity thing. We should just start each podcast with like, all right, random team in any sport, go. And we just keep going until we run out. And then sometimes it'll be like a German soccer club. We'll be like, yeah, all right, well, that was quick. And then we'll just move Well, we can't leave podcast. it up to Robert or else he'll pick like an Ethiopian badminton team every time just so it quit and quickens the podcast. That's why I was saying a random team generator. Oh, random team generator. Ooh, I like that. I like that. This guy's being because dudes. Because nobody checked me on this. We're doing that. But- <laughs> We should do one at the end of this podcast today, too. Just to get the juices flowing. What say you, Robert? Yeah, Robert, what do you think? I was going to say... It doesn't sounds, matter what like you think! Random celebrity generator. All right, ready? We're, we're Here we go. Do that one. Oh, we're doing one right now? I'm gonna, every, it's every sports team. Okay, let's do this. Spin. It's good. Oh, it's and it's give... a wheel? <laughs> We're gonna get Minnesota something Twins. Go, Yo, Kirby man. Puckett, dude. Kirby Puckett. <laughs> CC Sabathia when he was on the Twins. Robert, give us a Twins player. I know you know at least one. Uh, Carlos Correa. I know. There you go. Team. That's the one I was oh. looking for. <laughs> uh, bro, did, most people might not know this. David Ortiz started with the Twins, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Rod Carew, Hall of Famer, Rod Carew. <laughs> I'm running out of names now, too. Johan Santana. <laughs> was he Indians oh, yeah. or was he No, twins? I believe he was Twins and then he was Mets. Yeah. Joe Nathan? I was, they've, they've got another player right now who's outstanding. I think he was the number two pick when Korea was one, and I can't think of his name. Starts with like a B. Yeah, no, this is great. Brian this Bu- is great. Brian Buxton? Buxton. Brian. Buxton. 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 Yeah. yeah. Brian Buxton. All right. All right. Yeah, he's really good. Okay, well, hey, that was a good teaser because we don't know a lot of twins. So we got we got two or three names out there. That's good. 
All right, one more time. Show more. Show more. Okay, one more. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that. It's gonna be like Atlanta Thrashers. Fuck. It was the Carolina Hurricanes, and I was like, we're gonna run out of that fast. Mr. Schmetznikov. Texas Rangers skip. <laughs> I like how there's scenes where we're automatically like, fuck that shit. Josh Hamilton. I don't want to do that. Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett. Uh, Anthony Edwards. Uh, Rick, bro, Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio! Remember how uh, sick Ricky Rubio was going to be? Spanish and then he just he wasn't? Because he didn't come over for like 25 years? Bro, bro. Wally Zerbiak, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Pat always name the white guys? That was good. That was good. <laughs> so those are the only NBA players I remember who are obscure players. Didn't Chase Budinger? Pat Bev? Going Chase Budinger? We traded Chase Budinger to the Timberwolves, didn't he? Because uh, Pat, Pat Bev there Rick for like five days. Yeah, Rick Adelman. Rick Adelman was, was our coach, and then he went to the Wolves, and then he took Chase Budinger. Yeah, I think Pat Beverly was there for like five days. Yeah, he time. was. He won the play-in. Cole Aldridge. Oh, never mind. It was a different team. It was Friday, but he was there, yeah. Cole Aldridge. Oh, my God. That's a throwback fucking name. Mo Williams. Mike Miller. Mike Miller played um, for every team, so I feel like no yeah, matter what it's the NBA, we could just say that. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, I think he played there. All right, well. I got nothing that, else. That was – Anthony Edwards? Isn't he on there now? Or did you say that yeah, already? Yeah, I say Anthony Edwards. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns. Cat. Cat. That's one of the coolest names. I don't care just if this segment is just cat. for me and you. Yeah, this, this is, is my. This is now my favorite right. thing to do. Okay. I'm gonna look forward to this every Wednesday. Let's like let's make that like we, we'll we'll sandwich it so Robert doesn't hate us too much. Like we'll start go with our our great like our our starters for the pod before we end the the pre come segment. We do the random sports team and just name guys, and then at the end we do the random celebrity team. Done. We'll we'll, we'll start reaching we'll out to pro one. teams. We'll reach out to Pro Teams, Bick. If you want to throw some money our way, we'll do your team this week. No, I don't know how many are going to bite. Random wheel. <laughs> random wheel that would tell we'll us if t- we were we'll doing it right now. That. I'm just addicted to spinning wheels, honestly. Wheels are great, dude. Wheel of Fortune was my favorite. Oh, the New York Rangers? We could have done the New York Rangers next. Robert, just think about it. Think about it. We could have done both Rangers if we really wanted to. Maybe even Power Rangers after that. <sighs> Tommy Panthers. Oh, Carolina Red Panthers would be so fun. What? The Red Ranger. Red. <laughs> Which Black. one? There's been a Yellow. lot of Red Rangers doing Green. talking about Rich Turbo. Oh, remember the white one? Actually, it, one? it's funny because like all the like different Rangers through like the first three series, it was just the same guy. They just kept using him. Yeah. We'll get a whole new cast, but he's still around. And it was all dubbed. Like all of the non helmet off parts were dubbed it was like a japanese one still a great fucking show shout out hasbro dude shout out hasbro all right final comeback kid this week we really got sidetracked there sorry about that robert uh our final comeback kid this week is bloodbaths because did you guys fucking see that trump said that it would be a bloodbath if you didn't win and everybody freaked out because that that was my favorite part of the internet this weekend I didn't even know what was going on, really. I just saw bloodbath was trending, and like I was like, "What? Oh God, what happened? Somebody get murdered?" And I went and clicked it. It was like, "Ah, Trump gets assassinated by a attack!" I was like, "Did he like murder? He he did someone get murdered at a Trump thing? Like, what's going on?" And I went and I clicked it. He's like, "If they lose, if I lose, it's gonna be a bloodbath." And then that was what everybody freaked out over. I mean, he he could have said, "If I lose, we're gonna have a garden party," and people would have freaked out over it. But garden party would be sick, though. Would be like the office <laughs> episode, later seasons. Melania is gonna serve finger sandwiches. Um, bloodbath is funny. Let's maybe that, that was a maybe we just chill out internet moment. We were like, "Hey, let's just settle down," because some takes were fired off that oh, day. Oh, of course they were. Some fucking takes. We're fired off. Look, like, see, this is inciting violence again. Again, it's inciting violence. What the fuck? Like, dude, settle down. It's Twitter. It's not Twitter. It's a speech, but still. He was like, we're going to really fit. Like, we're going to actually murder everybody if I don't win. He didn't say that. He said it's going to be a bloodbath. That would be like me 
talking about if Sam Houston had not choked in the fucking conference tournament and was going to play like a two seed in March Madness tomorrow, I'd be like, yeah, it's probably gonna be a bloodbath. Sam's going to get their ass kicked. Longwood, just, if they pull off the upset, might be a bloodbath for you, bitch. Like, are you going to get mad about that? Because you can't. You're not allowed. Yeah, but it's politics. Ticks. We're talking ticks, bro. I want to go back in there and just find all the people that were freaking out about it. Like, dude, you know what you can do? Buy a gun. Protect yourself. Just Whoa, double down on pissing them off. On this show, pal. But yeah, no, just in, do that. In, Lean into it. In Texas? Don't talk about guns in Texas? Look, leave a little room for Jesus for those guns, pal. <laughs> so what you're saying is Jesus would not want a shoulder-mounted rifle. He would be more comfortable with a handgun. I can yeah. see that. Jesus looks like he would like to do a wield. Do a wield crosses. <laughs> well, when he puts the he fires off rounds and then he blows the smoke out of them and makes a cross with the guns. That's what it said in the Bible. That's what it said. Job, look it up. Job 1427. I read it just this morning. Shit. Jesus stepped out of the stone, fired off a round into the sky, and said, I'm back. And for that, he said, yeet, yeet. <laughs> and there was joy. And the I people bet, yeeted. I, I, I bet you in that fucking millennial... Remember how somebody like... Uh, rewrote the Bible in terms of like Gen Zers or whatever it was. I bet you at some point though. And Jesus said, yay, yeet unto us. I would love that. And then we would just make Robert read it to us. And Jesus said, skibbity beep bop boop toilet. And for, and so we go to um, Austin 316 for God thought the world was so bussin that he sent his one and only young blood to protect us all and get our backs, y'all. And he thought that was some good, good. For real, for real. And Jesus said, yay, my father, do not cap. <laughs> <laughs> the Moses Holy said, Spirit is bussin'. <laughs> and when they got to the inn, the innkeeper said, on God, we ain't got no room for you. <laughs> for real, for real. F R F R. I love it. If that's not been written already, we need to like just work on translating. No, no, that it, would be it is. hilarious. No, it a hundred percent is. Somebody, I thought we had talked about this before. Somebody did like rewrite the Bible, but for Gen Zers. It's fucking wild. Look it up later, dude. It's wild. I remember as a kid, my parents got me a Bible that was like, like somebody did that. They wrote it for kids, basically, where it wasn't like all like foreign languagey and like weird. Old Englishy. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is cool. You can understand it. That was my Bible. Like when I would go to church and like, well, we would have to take a Bible to church when we go to youth group in high school. I. I would I use the children's Bible still, so it would like not match up with the right words that everybody else is reading. I was like, oh no, this is for dumb people because I don't want to read it like that. I'm gonna read like it would be normally said, like normal people would say it. I don't understand the words. I am a dumb, but Jesus would have forgiven me. I thought so they were talking about Kanye, but they were just saying yay. I That's did what not I was know in the for. Bible, it meant something different. I was under the impression that this was a Kanye concert. <laughs> Are you telling me that Jesus himself will not be here? All right. Well, oh, you I'm said Jesus? Never mind. I'm out. Might be. Might be. But Bloodbath's back. I am not a Donald Trump supporter at all. But just there's times where you're like, that, that was just good old-fashioned funny. It was just good old-fashioned funny right there. And it was like saying Bloodbath and getting people worked up. Like sometimes... You have to take the politics out of it and just realize we're going to look back at this and be like, what the fuck? Remember when Don Trump did that shit? Like, that was crazy. Well, that was yeah, like like every, every time you hear them freak out about something he said, it's like, oh, you said it was going to be a bloodbath. And you're usually you can just go, OK, well, I know he said the word bloodbath. Let's go back and listen. And that's not really what he said. It's just Trump being an asshole trying to stoke people into writing articles, say he said something that was similar, but not quite what he said. Yeah, because then he just yep. gets to go. 
the fake news media lying about me again. I would love to hear Trump talking and like Gen Z talk. They're lying on me. It's all cap. They're capping on God. On God. They're capping my dog. Joe Biden, have you seen this guy? No Riz. He is no not Riz. messing. Get the Riz of an old man. Because he is an old man. Sleepy Joe. How are you Riz when you're sleeping? I feel like Riz is probably like out of fucking date slang now too. But that's as nope. recent as nope. I get. Using it. Using it still. Bloodbath though. They're back. That was our comeback kid segment. Let's move on to the mock draft segment. March Madness is back. We've done a mock draft of things that make us mad. I think we've done a mock draft of things that make people mad online. We are now going to do just a mock draft of mad, which is all encompassing. We got to keep this going next year and find another way to spin mad and do it, do it again next year for March Madness. (laughs) We could we could probably find something. I'm sure we could find something if we if we tried hard enough. But um, let's do a mock draft of Mad. Let's recap last week. We did the mock draft of what was our mock draft? We did. I don't remember. I just remember it didn't lucky go well things. for me. Lucky, lucky things. Yeah. Mock draft of lucky things. Oh um, yeah. I got fifty percent of the vote. You had a horseshoe. Robert yes. was in second place. I did pick horseshoe, so that might have been it. Robert picked. Uh, he he was in second place with thirty six percent of the vote, and Pat was in last place yet again with fourteen percent of the vote. So on the season through four weeks, Pat or Robert and myself are tied at two wins each, and Patsy has zero. So this week minor draft setback order, for a major comeback. Right, exactly. It's all this. Exactly. Who knows? You got five weeks to figure it out, dude. You could win out. You could win out. There you go. Nobody knows. Uh, but this week's draft order, we're going to go in the reverse order of how he finished last week. So it's a snake draft. It's going to go Pat, Robert, me, me, Robert, Pat, Pat, Robert, me, me, Robert, Pat. The mock draft of Mad. This is kind of wide open. 1-1, one, one, what you got, Pat? I have what I think is the best first overall pick since I got to take bacon. I believe that was under breakfast foods or whatever it was back in the day. Yeah. This is that elite. I'm taking John Madden. Fuck! I was hoping nobody was going to take that, but that's a solid Ooh, pick. John Madden! Solid baby. pick. That's a solid one. pick. Mm-hmm. I knew Alex was going to have it on there somewhere, but I was like, yeah, that's, I had that's him, one I one if I've ever seen it. I had him 1-1. One, one. Robert? All right. I'm going the one, the only, Gordon Ramsay. He's mad all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I knew all not right. all of them were going to have Matt in it. Some of them were just going to be mad people. I see. I didn't think. I didn't think it was going to be that way. soon. <laughs> um, I got two here. I'm going to go March Madness. Of course, was, best yeah. time, one of the best times of the year. And then I'm going to double back and take Billy Madison. That great. Too, so that's a yeah. great movie. And then I think that's two times I've taken Billy Madison this mock draft season in two different mock drafts. So shout out to me. That's not bad. Back to you, Robert. To me, I'm gonna go Mad TV. Mm. Go Mad TV. Okay. Very good. Um, let's see. With my second pick, I'm gonna go with another Hall of Famer, the Mad Dog, Greg Maddox. There's no reaction to that whatsoever. Maddox, I was typing okay. it down. You both just, I was just fucking stared at me. Well, I was writing it down to make sure that I was like, did I freeze? What the hell? No, you're good. Uh, Greg Maddox, good pick. Good pick. Uh, after that, you mad, bro? <laughs> just the saying, you mad, bro? I'm taking that third, third pick. I don't I like know about that. you guys, but that gets thrown around a lot in my group That's chat. good. That's very good. Mm-hmm. All right. Back to me. Back I'll to go, you, Bobby. I'll go Mad-Eye Moody. Ooh, I like Ooh. that. Ooh. That's a very good one. Like the actual Mad-Eye Moody or the other dude that's impersonating Mad-Eye Moody? Well, he didn't Tri- say... He didn't say the guy impersonating Matt I. Moody. Well, did he? during the movie, the Matt actual Moody. guy. Okay, that's Matt good. Guy, yeah. Remember the other guy when he would just lick his lips? He's like, mm-hmm. 
I don't have my polyjuice potion. <laughs> I'm a lizard. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. What was his name? Cornelius Fudge or Mundungeness? I don't, I don't know. One of the, I think it was, it was Fudge. Mundungeness, I think. Mundungeness. Great fake name. Yeah. Everybody, just, everybody <laughs> do that. Yeah. Robert, you have to do it too. <laughs> and there's the screenshot. And there's our screen grab. <laughs> All right, Alex. Uh, I got two here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck, dude, there's a lot. It's a pick from left. I am gonna go. Mad Men, the TV show. Mm-hmm. Surprised it stayed that long, honestly. Mm-hmm. And then. I am going to go mad cow disease. Mad cow disease. <laughs> oh. Remember that summer? That was a weird summer. Mm-hmm. Hey, cows are mad. All right. So this is my last one. Yep. yep. This is it. Wrap it up. There are so many. It's wide open. I have so many yeah, that I can choose from. Tons. But I think if you went mad cow disease, I'm going to go mad mothers against drunk driving oh i had that <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a good one hey because drinking and driving it's not okay robert it's not it's okay. not okay you know what responsible pick now for the picture can i just put like a car uh antenna with the ribbon that they used to give you did they used to do that at your school you get the mad like ribbon and you were supposed to tie it to the antenna. Is that I don't think so. No, it uh, wasn't a thing here. I just been in Georgia. Did that. They would, it was a really like I get why they did it, but it was like a really depressing class when they come in. Like you'd be like, Oh cool, we're watching a movie. Oh it's not a fun movie. Yeah. And then you then as you get older, you're like, I was an asshole. That that woman went through a lot. <laughs> and I was like, I would rather be watching Bill Nye. Don't be an asshole, kids. Don't be an asshole. But mad, mother against drunk drivers. Solid. What you guys the final pick, and then we get to get to honorable mentions, which are gonna be nuts. I'm gonna take you back to about the summer of 2006. You're sitting there getting ready, and you see the trailer. One of the greatest video game trailers of all time for the original Gears of War. You just hear Gary Joel's all around me are familiar face. Mad World by Gary Joel's is an outstanding fucking song. And it was one of the greatest video game trailers in the history of the industry. Mad World by Gary Joel's. I love that. Mad World. I still get fucking goosebumps when I think about that trailer. Fucking made my fucking 16 year old dick wiggle every time I saw it and Gary Jules is spelled J-U-L-E-S which yes. is just the coolest way to spell Jules right yeah like when it's not the way that you would spell the diamonds you're like that's just fucking yeah no it's like cool. uh, like it's it's like you, you'd think his last name like his real last name was Gary Julius yeah but his friend just called him Jules so he's like it's my Jules. stage name is gonna be it's Gary perfect. Jules it's perfect. All right. So recapping our mock draft of Mad. Um, Pat, you got John Madden, Greg, the Mad Dog Maddox, You Mad Bro, and Mad World by Gary Jules. Mm-hmm. Robert got Gordon Ramsay, Mad TV, Mad Eye Moody, and Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, aka Mad. I got March Madness, Billy Madison, Mad Men and mad cow disease. Now, let's start with honorable mentions because I really wanted to take with my last pick, I wanted to take French maid and then just be like, oh, I misspelled maid. <laughs> <laughs> I I almost took Medea. I don't think that would have played. Like, I was like, oh, you know what? I don't know how much of an African-American listenership we have. So I feel like that would have been pandering to a group that Large. wasn't there. And Medea, uh, Madison Bumgardner. I had that too. I was not going to take him though. Um, Former President James Madison, who the university named for him is in March Madness this year. 
Yeah. Um, Mad in the video game. I should have just taken that first round. Oh, after I took John Mad. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get all of it. You didn't get this video game. I had- um, made in America because it's got mad in the word. There you go. And Madonna. Mad Donna. Madonna's good. Uh, we could have also taken the original angry coach, Bobby Knight. He was mad a lot, yeah. Um, saying what's a matter with an Italian. Oh. Well, I think you what's guys a actually, matter? It's what's a matter what's you. What's a matter? What's a matter you? What's a matter you? That's uh the pizza they have at the bar we watch soccer at. It's called the What's a Matter You pizza, and it's just got all of the <laughs> toppings on it. Because you do this, what's a matter you? You dump all the toppings. Uh, um, Madison Beer. I think she's like a hot model or something. Ashley Madison. Remember oh, that, that would have been a good you one. Cheat on your spouse with it. I'm against infidelity, obviously. Um, Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. Mm, yeah. Mad Max Fury Road. And that's God. I didn't even write down Mad about, Max. That's crazy. I just oh Madison this one Square Garden. I really almost took this one. It's British slang. He's a mad lad. I just love a that. mad lad. Yep. I, it's so stupid. And it's he's sound, mad. Like, it doesn't sound right in any accent other than English. Like just be like, dude, you're a mad lad. No, it doesn't work. But in Britain, it's just it's great fucking slang. Yeah, that plays. That plays. All right. So those are mock draft of mad. I will put the graphic up. Three o'clock ish on Thursday. It'll go up until about. 5 five thirty on Friday, you can vote, and then that's how we'll we'll have our winner crowned by the weekend. We'll see if Robert and I can separate from one another or if Pat can get his first victory of the season. It's week five of mock draft season. We got ten total weeks, so we're halfway through. Before you know it, mock draft season is gonna be over. We'll fly by, flown by. And then it's gonna be the draft. It'll be the actual draft. Which I'm sick of talking about already still. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm so I'm excited. listening to it more, but then like I do reach the point every day. I'm like, I don't fucking care anymore. I don't care. Like it's I just, just fu- every morning I see a new mock draft. I'm like, Ooh, a giants go. A giants might trade back now. Okay. Okay. This is what we're doing. And then I get to like the fourth one. I look at it, Like, I don't give a shit. It's stupid. And then everybody hypothesizing about, well, if they get this, this is going to mean this, what's it going to mean this? Like, but if they don't, then none of what you're talking about is going to matter. It's, it's, it's fu- dude, it's football. It's football when there's no football. I'm worried about my hockey team getting in the playoffs right now. So, like, I've been really stressing about that. Fair I don't enough. even care. Like, I'm not even worried. People are like, you worried about the Yankees? Don't even care. Don't even care. I got, I'm, I'm focused on hockey right now. All right. Yankees uh, start after hockey season, which hopefully this... is not over soon. This doesn't really fit into anything, but breaking news. Uh, news. Shohei Otani's interpreter fired, got fired because his lawyers accuse him of uh, massive theft to allegedly place bets within a legal bookie. This dude had the golden job. All you had to do was interpret for Shohei Otani and make shit tons of money. Wow. Dodgers fucking cheaters, dude. Cheaters? Dodgers cheaters. So, like, I mean, why would he place bets unless Shohei told him who to bet or what to bet, huh? Seems sus. Seems sus. It's almost like Shohei. We, we should probably Pete suspend Rose Shohei. I mean, suspend Shohei for Lifetime life. ban, Pete Rose. Lifetime ban, Pete that's Rose. gambling. That is gambling on games. It's, it's the guy who's interpreting for him, so it was Shohei saying place the bets. In... Japanese? Yeah. Okay. In Japanese. He was saying it in Japanese, and that guy was translating it. He was like, go bet me to hit a home run. He'd say that in Japanese, and the guy would be like, okay, cool. I'm going to go bet Shohei to bet a, to hit a home run, and then he'd go do it. Shohei's obviously running the show there. Yeah, How and for all the people out there Rose? listening that are probably like, well, he was betting on himself. Pete Rose is betting on himself, and he's out. Lifetime ban Shohei, but you still have you still owe him all the money because it's fully guaranteed. Yeah, you don't get that, and you can't get it back, and you have to pay it. But then he also has to donate it to some fund that he doesn't like. I'm just gonna tweet out, Dolphins. "Wow, he has of to donate, course, like a dolphin rescue." 
Wow, Dodgers involved in illegal gambling controversy. Yeah. What a shock. Wow. Are the Dodgers ruining baseball? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're trying to. Sweet. They're trying to, but, you know, they're such pieces of shit they can't even do it right. Shohei Otani. No, I'm not saying Shohei. I'm saying the Dodgers organization. No, I mean, clearly. It's more fun to implicate just the Dodgers. <laughs> Maybe I'll tag what say you, Cody Bellinger. <laughs> Fuck that piece of shit. He's going to suck. It was He's back with the Cubs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck that guy. If I ever put unacceptable in a tweet, just by the way, the fun little hack on me, if I ever put unacceptable in a tweet, know that I am not serious. All right, if you ever see a tweet from Alex J. Middleton, and I say the words unacceptable, know that that is a trolley tweet. <laughs> or sickening, anything like that, I'm clearly not serious. Because Saquon Barkley, was, there was a tampering thing on the Eagles. And I got in a whole debate with somebody about like banned for life, banned for life cheaters. And it was like, well, they had a conversation before they were technically allowed to have a conversation. And I was like, nope, ban them for life. And somebody was like, you mean the, the organization doing that should be Saquon should be banned? I was like, yes, absolutely. Maybe jail even, probably even jail. Honestly, straight to jail would be if it was up to me, ban them from the sport. Not even, not good for it. What, what are the kids supposed to think that you can cheat? You want my daughter to come into this world thinking that you can cheat like Saquon Barkley does and the Philadelphia Eagles? No, I don't want her raised in a world like that. Sick. I, I, I wish, like, I'm not going to hashtag or tag anything, but I worded it hoping that Dodgers fans will come back at the Astros. I called them a garbage can organization to leave that open just to see what happens from it. But I'm not tagging anything, so nobody's going to see it. <laughs> And ended it with, of course, like you have to, ever since Trump stylized it, like you did, what did you say? Was it unacceptable? Unacceptable. I, I just ended it with shame! Exclamation point. Yeah, shame's good. That's a good one, too. I like that. <laughs> that always plays. Kind of gets the point through. Always. It's perfect. It's perfect. Fucking um, Dodgers. So breaking it is Shohei Otani. Cheater. Confirmed. Facts. No place in this game for cheating. None. Big anti-cheaters None. here. Um, Unless it's obviously. in a hotel on your spouse, there's no cheating in professional sports. And we still don't condone that. Unless you have we a situation. We don't. I'm just saying it is a problem. Right, 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 right. Fuck you, Shohei. Fuck a piece of shit. Fuck you, dude. Fucking idiot. By the way, I don't count today as opening day. I know that people were saying it was opening day. If if I One, if I am not in the country, that oh, we'll does get not to count. That. Two, if the game is not played in this country... I do not count that. So, like, fuck you, Dodgers. None of these games count if you're playing in Seoul. I also was in Seoul. Mexico when the Rangers. Seoul. It's Seoul. It's not my country. Seoul. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. As a big fan of Korea and all things Korean and their women, I will not stand for that. They, well, play the games in my country, all right, guys? They don't recognize it. I'm not disagreeing with you. But Korea's got Seoul, dude. Remember that T-shirt way back yeah. in the day? That was yeah. A yeah, that was a good one. That was a good shirt. Um, all right, moving on. Let's move on to the not cool segment. A lot of things in life are not cool. One of those things will never be a little lame air freshener because if you got a shitty air freshener hanging in your rear view mirror, you got one of those stupid little trees, get rid of those and head over to littlelimshop.com and get you some of the best air fresheners on the planet. They got the fresh to death scent, the little ice scent, and the Miami beach scent. And they also have awesome designs that look way cooler than those baby back bitch little fucking trees that you probably got hanging on your rear view mirror right now. I changed out the the little M air freshener that's in the trash can earlier this weekend. I, uh, I had opened it up, but the other one was, it had been there for a couple months, kind of, you know, was starting to stink when I pulled that trash out and I was like, you know what, let's just exchange them out there, put a new little M air freshener down there. Smells great. Took out the trash last night, had a little whiff of that little M scent. It was awesome. I put the fresh to death in there. Would recommend that for you too. Little M shop.com. They don't just have air fresheners. They also got keychains. They got all the tchotchkes you should ever want. You're getting a gift for a teacher. You got a gift for a kid's birthday party. Go to littlemshop.com, littleemshop.com. You get custom keychains. You can get keychains that already have cool sayings on them. And if you get 10, if you spend $10 more, you're going to get free shipping on your order as well. And you can also get 10% off when you use our promo code PTG69 at checkout. Go to littlemshop.com. Use our promo code PTG69 at checkout for 10% off your order. If you spend $10 more, you're going to get $10 or you're going to get free shipping as well. 
littleemshop.com, promo code PTG69. If you're getting anything from Little M Shop, make sure you tag them. They're at Little EM Shop on Instagram and at Little EM Tweets on Twitter. Let them know you're supporting the people, supporting the podcast. littleemshop.com, the official sponsor of the Not Cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not, not, cool. not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not, not cool. Not, not cool. All right. Um, our not cool. If you'd like to vent with us, all you gotta do is hit us up on Twitter. We're at past the great pod. Use the hashtag PTG not cool. That's how we'll sort through them. And we will read some of your not cools each week before we do ours. You can also watch the YouTube version. Robert works very, diff- very hard on this YouTube version. So go check it out. YouTube.com slash at past the great podcast, or just search past the great podcast on YouTube. Hit subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the audio version as well. Hit play on both, please. We would like the credits and then give us the ja ja jaws or tell Pat to fix the fucking sun uh, in the comments to help us out guys. Love you guys. YouTube, check it out. Uh, let's start with some of your listener viewers submitted not cools. Our first one's from our buddy Jordan Welch. He's at Jordan underscore Welch 2795. And Jordan says, I spilled a shake all over my car on the passenger side and whipped cream went everywhere. On top of that, Sonic took about 15 minutes to have it ready. Uh, the wait time sucks. I don't know if they're busy or not. There's not the worst than when you spill something on your in your car. And it's like, it's always when you're going to the destination you're going to go to. And then that just adds a chore. It adds one more chore. Now I got to go. Hope I have cleaning supplies. If I don't, I got to go stop at CVS or wherever else I'm on my way to, to get stuff to clean my car. If I'm on my way to an event, then like, do I let it sit while I go to the event and then come back and get it fixed? Whatever it is. Nothing good is ever is ever when, when you're spilling that shit and that just sucks on the passenger side you can't really do anything sometimes it just sloshes around until you can get somewhere that's the worst yeah he's especially peace. like if you like your cup holders are full so you just like put it in the seat propped up against something else you're like it'll be fine and then when it doesn't go fine all you ha- can do is internalize all of your rage at yourself because you're like why the fuck would i do that and it's the worst. and then yeah it's fast food and all you get in there is a shake i don't know if that's all you got but and taking that long, it sucks. And it should never take that long, but, you know, it happens. They get behind. They get a lot of orders, especially now with online orders. You can be like, there's nobody here. And you're like, yeah, but we just got 15 online orders in the last yeah. three minutes before it's you pulled up. 100 door dashes coming our way. But that's a solid, just, not cool, sucks. dude. Anytime you got to wait for fast food for a while, it really fucking sucks. And I feel like it never happens right when you pull out. It always ah. happens. Ah. It always happens like as you're getting ready to like you're you're pulling into the driveway. You're almost home. You're pulling into the neighborhood, pulling into your apartment complex. You hit something and just goes everywhere. It's like fuck, I almost made oh, it. Oh, I would I would disagree for I would say it always happens like maybe halfway home. It's just when you're so far enough like, where you're not going back. That's it never happens right down the street. Oh, I mean, I'll never go back. I just mean it I feel like it always happens in a spot where it's going to sit for another 10 minutes while I drive home. And then I have to try and get something to clean it with God forbid, or, or like it happens. And then you're just frantically reaching in your back seat, hoping that you have a random towel back there for some reason. That's what happens with me. Uh, all right. Next. Let's go to the next question we got or the next answer. Or not cool. We have, um, it's from Ashley Wilkins. No, it's from, it's from Raymundo. Excuse me. It's from Raymundo Benavides at Kmundo B on Twitter. And Mundo says, my dog Lucy gashed her head on my patio table. I will uh, send Robert the picture to attach to this. If you're watching the YouTube version. But yeah, um, she's got a pretty good sized gash on her head. It looks like she's okay, though. That's always scary, though. But your dog's bleeding. You're always like, what's up? What Are you okay? How you doing? Oh, yeah, but she's got injury. that big old. That big old squishy pity head. She does have a big old pit bull head. Also, I'm a, I want to add a not cool onto this. Um, unless your dog is Lucy, short for Lucifer, can you just fucking spell Lucy normal, dude? Should be L U C Y, not L U C I. Don't tell him how to spell his dog's name. I'm just saying, yeah, it's little shit like that that pisses me off. Don't tell him how to spell his dog. But name. if it's short for Lucifer, that's so cute. That's your cute puppy name. What if it's close? If it's uh, short for Lucipus, it could be Lucipus. Lucipus would be cool. 
Just spell things right. right. Um, T and P's and give, give give Lucy a kiss from me. Give give Lucy all the boobs, all the boobs. Um, give Ashley, her a kiss and a cookie. Kiss, cookie, and boob. Ashley Wilkins writes in with our next not cool. She's at Buster Healer Mix on Twitter, and Ashley says. Having to pay taxes is her not cool. Since it is an Olympic year this year, she says having to give the government a large sum of my money. I don't know if this is a way for Ashley to brag that she's rich, having to give a large yeah, sum. Yeah, well, I thought is this, is this a rich but brag? she's got a kid. I thought the only point of having kids is so that you get money back on taxes. She get, maybe she's getting more money back because she had the kid. That's why all my friends bitch about this every year, and I'm like, ha ha, suckers, I get money back. And it's my way of laughing at them for me being poor. Yeah, it's always fun. That makes you feel better. It makes you feel better. <laughs> Are you fucking losers? It's like, oh, I've got this much of my portfolio in this, and I'm like, ha ha, I got twelve hundred dollars back that I immediately spent because I'm bad with money. Yeah, it is tax season. Tax day is next week, so like, it is getting to that point where you're like, fuck, I haven't done them yet. I got to do my taxes. So yeah, having to do the taxes every four years when it's an Olympic year that sucks. This is that year, you know, fucking not ideal. I still got to do mine. I, you know, I, I got to find four years worth of finances to do all that shit for, but whatever. But yeah, having to do your taxes, just to sit down and do it. It's a pain in the ass. It's a chore. Nobody wants to fucking do it. We shouldn't have to do it. But yeah, solid, not cool, Ashley. Especially if you actually like have to do your taxes. Like if yeah. you have jobs that like require doing this and that and looking into tax breaks and shit like that, as opposed to me where I'm like, ha let's reload Turbo tax for 40% of it is refilled from last year. Done. <laughs> yeah everything about taxes suck it's fucking theft it does. they take too much money from us for a shit ton of government programs that we don't need to be funding not to mention just we fund other countries for god knows what fucking reason we should all just get to keep our own money and decide what to do with it but no the government's a bunch of bitches bunch of bitches fuck the government man that's basically the there you go. sentiment that comes around every tax year is fuck the government what Pat said. What Pat said. Um, yeah, solid, solid, not cool, Ashley. Don't forget to do those taxes by tax day next Tuesday. Super Tuesday. It's when you turn your taxes in. Everybody knows that. Um, next, we got Texas Cat Daddy. Good to hear from you again, buddy. Texas Cat Daddy, a.k.a. Brandon Davis. He's at a stream of cream on Twitter. And Brandon says, a dumbbell fell onto my thumb. Feels amazing. Hard to grip anything. And he sent a picture. I Do you feel like a dumbbell after, after that happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, he has the same kind <laughs> of thing he, where I dropped the dumbbell on my toe last week. He's got that cool little like blood spot under a nail that's going to be there for like six months now. Yeah, that's what we get for working out, dude. Just Look at the picture. Is it better. his right hand or his left hand? It's very important because he said he can't grip anything. Oh uh, yeah. You probably just do it. Just thumbs up jerk. Oh no, you just go with the other hand. Yeah. It's less efficient. Yeah, it'll get skill. the job done. Yeah, I could do I can do both hands. Yeah, you, I mean I'm pretty sure everybody could do it. I don't know anybody who is strictly one arm. Now Some people just don't know how. No now, don't get me wrong. Every dude, like you have the ability to do both. You're using one ninety eight percent of the time. I have to go fifty. Every once in a while. You go 50-50? That's a like wild hit, ratio. Dude. Just, that is you a know. wild ratio. Keep you ready to go. I don't I'm really going to have to put this to a poll in the group chat because... I don't really go 50-50. It's just funny. Oh, okay. I was like, that's crazy. Well, hold on. Shit, was it last time? I, it's usually... Okay, I got to go lefty. Like, you got to go lefty. It's usually like I'm, a, I'm really drunk and my shoulder or whatever is tired. Let's switch it up. <laughs> I go That's usually with like, what it is. If I see that it's a, if she's like giving like a righty HJ, then I always go left because that's what the pitch curves. Pitch curves towards me. It gives, it gives me more more opportunity to, to knock it out of the park. But if she's going right, then I go left. If she goes left, I go right. Switch hitter style, dude. Robert, what about you? Are you, uh, you just a right or left hand only guy or you switch it up? Uh, I'd say that pretty ambidextrous. Pretty ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome then. back. <laughs> Robert just sits down like, what, what hand are you jerking with, bud? <laughs> and he thought he was going to like, we talking about writing. <laughs> Robert's like, what are we talking about? 
<laughs> Wait, what? Um, yeah, T's and P's, Brandon. That sucks, dude. Um, as a dumbbell dropper survivor, I, you know, I, I sympathize with you, and it's only up from here, buddy. It's only up from here. Don't. Hey, at least, at least you didn't hurt yourself running on treadmill because these colors don't run, buddy. Right, minor setback for major comeback. Just look at it that way, buddy. And I also like that, like when you have some sort of minor gym, anything. Like, you're like ah, I think I sort of tweaked my ankle. Like, it's the best excuse to just get out of working out the next day. Like, I ha- I I work out Monday and Tuesday and Thursdays usually, and then I try to do it on a weekend if I can. Not that anybody cares, but like, I like but I was doing a workout yesterday. I feel like I tweaked my ankle, and like I'm already thinking like I might not have to work out tomorrow. Like tomorrow, I may just take tomorrow off. You know, let the ankle heal. It's like it's not that bad. But like when you when you have anything like oh I dropped a dumbbell on my on my hand. Can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, I can still use my hand, but like not working out. Take a day off, dude. Take a day off. Take a you day. Just do legs. Do but legs. not yeah, running. Not running. Do the actually, um, I mean, technically, depending on how much of a grip you can do with the thumb, and if you use the wrist straps, you could probably still do hand grip. Or at the or at the very least, just uh shoulder shrugs. Yeah, probably don't do hand clean. But shoulder shrugs clean. you can do with, with just the finger grip. You're good. Quit being a, you know what, you know, quit being a bitch, bro. Leave a little room for Jesus, bro. When you when you're dropping those weights, I bet it, I bet it actually happened because you were finger popping your asshole with your thumb, huh? Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Got him. Uh, Our last listener submitted, not cool, comes from Danielle Weston at Danny underscore Weston on Twitter, and she says, "Hail damage." Her not cool is hail damage. She says, my husband, my poor husband Mustang got demolished by hail last night. We got a lot of hail damage. And then she attaches a picture. Oh. You want to throw that up on the video, Robert? And Damn. Yeah, it doesn't look great. That doesn't look great. Like, it's not, it's not horrible. What a weird thing. Like, it's not like when you, when, like, in your first, when you first hear hail damage in your brain, you think about, like, large clumps putting like baseball size dents. It's not that it's lots of little dents. So like you can look past it, and not notice it. But as soon as you see it, you're like, Oh, that's a, that's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. That sucks. You know what they say? Hail is, it's just nature's way of getting this back for when we shoot guns up in the sky on 4th of July. Well, that's if nature guess. doesn't want that, then guns shouldn't be so fun. That's, I mean, I say that every time, but I'm just letting you know that's why they say it hails to get us back for that. I love how every year there's like some PSA out there like, don't shoot guns up in the air because the bullet's got to come back down. And they're like, shut up, nerds. <laughs> Popping off rounds, dude. It's fun. But yeah, I mean, it's more fun to shoot it downrange at a target. But sometimes you got to do a desk pop, even when you're out in the. Uh, sometimes the you got to do a desk pop. You never know, dude. You never know. Um, I'll go first. Or Robert, you wanna go first? You wanna go first? Sure, I'll go first. Um so Sam's camera on her phone isn't working properly. Like she has it set on a timer and it, it just won't take the picture. Or like the shutter button will be grayed out. So even if she presses it, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. And uh so she's had to use my phone. Because we have the same phone for uh, for that. Mine's working just fine. But she has refused to go get it fixed. Like, it's still under warranty, so it'd be free. But I'm like, okay, you want you want to go to the place? I'll go with you. It's like, no. I'm doing stuff right now. It's not a good time. As she's doing stuff with your phone? Yeah. Here's what you do. Now, it's it's going to take time out of your day, too. But one of the days when she gets home, just go, hey, I planned something special for us. You got five minutes of change to get in the car. And don't just be mysterious about it. And then just drive right to the phone store. And then afterwards, we can get we, we can we can get dinner. But like, but just just plan it like you did something sweet and heartfelt for her, and then just drive right to the phone store. So she has no chance, no, no choice. Better idea that makes you look better. Like go to lunch with her. And then, like, go to lunch 
by the phone store. But hey, well, on our way back, why don't we just swing by the phone store? And then it's not like, aha, I tricked you. It's like, uh, well, we're passing this on the way back. That way she doesn't think like, oh, he only is taking me to lunch to take me to the phone store. That's just, well, well, we're on, well, on no. our way home. I'll tell you why that's a bad idea. Because you never know how long it's going to take because they have to transfer over like all the information from phone to phone. And what if whatever you ate isn't sitting well and you got to poop? Yeah, no, do, do it. Do I it said. first. Still do what I said. Do it first and then take her out to eat. So she'll be mad. But every Disagree. girl that's ever been mad, if you feed them, they're significantly less mad right after. So trick that's her why I'm saying when you feed them, then she will already have been fed. So she'll be like, all right, let's just go. And that not like you tricked me and made me go to the phone store is this is just a convenient thing that we're doing on the way back. Well, well but here's the thing. If you feed first and then you go well, on the way back, let's swing and they'll be like, no, I'm tired. I don't want to. And then if you do it anyway, bam, instantly mad again. You're the bad guy. If you just get bad guy out of the way first and you just get it done and then you're like, all right, let's get something to eat. Then once they eat, no matter what the anger level's at, it's gonna drop. So you're if you do it the other way, the anger level can spike back up for, the, for you not listening to them. Respectfully, as somebody that's in a relationship, I nah, think nah, what nah, I'm nah, saying. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. Have you haven't <laughs> you ever heard the saying, those that can't do teach? Mm -hmm. That's me. Right, but I mean I've also like dealt with the relationship for the better. Yeah, part but of like Emma doesn't years. count because she's like fucking chill as shit. Yeah, I mean Sam's pretty chill, so I don't think Sam's gonna like freak out. Robert and me are pretty good at like. Just, I'm just saying. Okay. Just, okay, okay. You know what? If you guys get ten <laughs> minutes into the phone transferring and you have to cancel it, somebody's got to poop. Just bring that information back here, and I'll say I was right. Okay. All right. I will admit that you were right if that exact scenario happens. <laughs> I still have another one where tomorrow I have to go somewhere for work, and we were talking about it. It's like, oh, this location is going to be around the office it's not gonna be far we're not gonna do that i found out where the location is today it's 40 minutes away they're the old switcheroo huh yeah well where they bait you in i'm like hey it's not that far it's pretty easy to do and you're like all right well i can take this gig and then psych i mean that's still pretty to say it's by the office and it's not that far as bad 40 minutes in houston is not technically that far it's kind of far it 40 far. minutes could be an hour and 20 mm -hmm. depending on yeah but it also Everything. could just be no. It, they could be like, no, it's in Houston. We're fine, and you find out it's an hour and twenty away. But yeah, no, that's bullshit. They pulled the bait and switch on you, and that's crap. You want me yeah, to come talk to them? Crap. Want me Maybe. to come talk to him for you? Maybe. Okay. Well, let me know if if I can't make it, I'll call my boy Frankie. It's a good plan. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was looking Frankie O and Associates. Let us know. There's a guy that comes to the restaurant, and we just know him as Johnny O. And one because he, it does the O stand for Ocho. You know Frankie, Ocho? the eight man. He'd be like, "Get the fuck away from me!" <laughs> what if he's like, "You know fucking Frankie? You know Frankie? How you know Frankie? We we're, we're business associates. We go back, way back. <laughs> All right." Um. There's some solid, not cool, Robert. Here, I'll go next. That way you can close because I feel like yours are going to be the strongest. Well, and then we share the last. We'll share. The, I'll say uh, one we yeah. both share for the end. We do. Um, I just, why, and I'm kind of surprised Robert didn't use this one. Why the fuck would opening day, and I understand the way they do it now is like, we're going to do opening day overseas so that we get that market. You're scheduling the first official baseball games of the year at 5 a.m. when nobody can fucking watch that. It's 3 a.m. It was 5 a.m. 3 a.m. I looked at it last night. It said first pitch 5.05. Yeah, 5 a.m. Central. It was 5 a.m. Central. But, like, if you were an L.A. If you were a fan in any of the time zones. Why the zones fuck the would teams... we be talking about L.A. times? <laughs> we're in Texas. No, but that's what makes it even more insane. If you were a fan of the Dodgers or the Padres, oh, you were the still two be up teams. 3 a.m. But if they were the two teams playing, this is a Wednesday like they like that's a 3 a.m. start time. What the fuck were you thinking? Trying to get like but who gives and, and a shit? I don't well, like I, back to your point of like why why are we doing this in other countries? Like I understand when the NFL is like, we're gonna do a game I'm in fine London because they don't have football there. Like they have their own fucking baseball league in Korea. 
They have their they yeah, have but, mini leagues there. Like, who gives a fuck? But the we are the biggest lead. We have stars from all of these. I don't know if there's anybody you from Korea currently playing. Here. But but it, it's just the fact that it's. I don't know what time they started over there to make it a five a.m. start time. Let's say it was a seven o'clock game for them. Make it a nine o'clock game. Fuck it. People will go. It's the it's Major League Baseball. They'll go whatever fucking time you want it. Make it a nine o'clock game so that then it's a at least seven o'clock game here. Five o'clock is insane. Everybody's either asleep. I woke up in the eighth inning. I woke up at 7.30 this morning. I That's thought. not that late. That's fucking crazy. Like, it was like, Alex, you were one of nine people in America that was able to watch the game. I didn't and, fuck about it. But then even then, you'd be like following on your phone because you're getting ready for work. You don't if have the time game, to fuck it. It's just, it's an insane thing to do the opening game. Or like, make it an 11 a.m. game over there. So maybe it's like, what would that be? Uh, Like 9 p.m. over here. Or even if it's like a midnight start time over here. But That's do the fine. Dodgers and them, are they coming back and playing spring training games? No, no. So they're done with spring training. They played last night and tonight, or uh, sorry, this tomorrow. morning and tomorrow <laughs> morning. And then they fly back. They're done. And then baseball starts for everybody else on Thursday. Yeah. Um. Again. So, so it gives them a week to get over jet lag, which is you have to do it. I that think way. they are playing like some exhibition games. Wait, really? I think so. Yeah. Nope, they all count. They have to all count now. All of their, all of the, Whoa. if the Dodgers lose a, an exhibition game, they count. It counts. And I, I will I, refuse I, to not acknowledge that it counts. I got to be completely honest with you. I thought there's just no way, like, th- this has to be, their season has started. They can't play exhibitions after this. If they're playing exhibition games after they have already played real games, yeah, this dude. is the most That's asinine this thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I'm looking through the schedule right now to see if we have any. I have to assume either way, it wouldn't be Thursday or Friday, either one of them playing. But if they have other games. Yeah, they have and, unless 24th, 25th, and 26th. They got spring training games. Yeah. What? You're having them start official game. Just have them play spring training fucking games over there then. That's what, what that's the what I'm saying, going dude. On? Like, that, and hey, that's you wanna... insane. I, I didn't even anticipate that that would be a possibility. Yeah, baseball's stupid. But then, um, Whoa. remember a couple of years ago when the Yankees and the Red Sox played a game in London where West Ham plays, coincidentally? And well, that was like, cool hey. because you get time back flying back across. Well, also, they did that during the fucking season. Yeah, Just do it during the season. If you want to go to also, fucking Korea, do it during the fucking season, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. Do that's a lot the... longer. That's a lot it's farther. It's fucking though. London, man. They went to England. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But they're flying from East Coast across the Atlantic I Ocean. I don't fucking care. The you want to go there? The Pacific Ocean is suck... much farther. I you don't literally, give a shit. You literally time warp. A shit. You time warp when flying across the Pacific Ocean because of the fucking time zones. And here's the thing. At least if they do it in London again, I would be down for because I'm just going to go, I'm betting the over. Because remember, every game in that series had like 22 runs. Yeah, but I don't give a fuck if it's going to cause you jet lag. If you're going to have jet lag from a game, don't play games where you might have jet lag. I don't give a fuck if, if South Korea gets a game. I also, don't. The, they, have a, the they, London, have, they, they have a lot of TVs there. They can watch all the, the London games, games they want to watch. The London games didn't really make sense because baseball is not a thing in Britain. No, that in makes Korea, more sense. it is. Because you no, can no, go watch no. a sport you don't have already. Like, I don't want to go watch other shit yeah, that no, I already have. Yeah, that's why have. it doesn't make sense. Korea makes sense because they do watch uh, baseball, and they do follow Major League Baseball at least a little bit because there are international players from Asia over here. London doesn't make sense. Asia does. It's makes just, it's, you it's just, this sport it doesn't you make watch. sense. Just like with football. You don't watch this sport normally? Here, it's here for this time. I don't, like... We're not acknowledging those Dodgers. The Dodgers win. I don't acknowledge it. It doesn't count. That that These doesn't make sense because if, if the best cricket games. teams, if the best cricket teams came over and they aired it on ESPN and they played in New York, would you watch? No, because you don't watch that sport. 
but it's a spectacle. You're oh cool, that's that sport that they watch over there. Let's go watch it. Like that's what people go to the NFL games. People for. might that's go to, to watch it, but you're not going to get any viewership from it. I don't care. Baseball is dumb, and I'm not arguing this anymore. It's a stupid decision because they make stupid decisions because it's a stupid league. The Astros are doing it right though. They're going to play in Mexico yeah, during same the fucking time zone. season. Same during time the fucking zone. season. Same time zone. And get, and because it's a sport that. When they played over in Asia, it makes sense because they have it there. They're playing in Central America because the sport is there. Playing in London doesn't make sense where the sport is not. They had an Olympic baseball team, so it is a sport there. Oh, you it's mean the there. Olympic baseball team whose jerseys look like they literally ironed the fucking letters on 10 minutes before the game? Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure that sport isn't actually there. Well, they had an Olympic team, so just say It's like trying to play club hockey in Texas. You can do it, but it's going to be literally like – People are fl- driving from three hours away just to play for the team that they actually play for. It doesn't also exist. It's called travel ball. It's also just travel ball, too. Uh, my not no, cool. No, I mean to play a home game. My not cool is I'm a Zen bitch. I uh, tried to dip my toe into the Zen game this weekend. It we did went not to go the well. Sabercats game. I went with Pat. Uh, shout out to Mikey and Joe. We got to hang out with them. We got to hang out with Ashley. And Sergio, some gravy gang representing out there. Um, but yeah, my brother had some Zins and was like, hey, you want one? And I was just like, hell yeah. No, no, like, no, 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 no. He didn't like was, say, do you want one? He I had offered me one earlier. He had offered me one earlier and I hadn't taken oh. it. And then I took him up on it when he had that one. And he I was like, pulled that one, it. put one in, and you said, let me get one of those. And he was like, all yeah. right. So I, I was like, all right, let's, let's do this. And 10 minutes maybe and i was spending i don't even dude. think it was 10 minutes I was it was literally like spinning. three minutes later you leaned over to me like dude this zin is kicking my ass i was spending, <laughs> not a big tobacco or nicotine user as you and can I tell think, i think those were six milligrams he had if it had a three milligram you might have been okay but yeah dude it yeah. got gotcha. you I was spinning and Pat was like, let's go get some food. And so we went to go get food. I handled it pretty well. I I mean, I just kind of was on my own. Well, you there. stayed just, silent. Just sweating it out, watching. I was watching the game. Watching I, the was, game. I was standing in line trying to get us chicken tenders. And Alex was literally just squatting next to me, breathing. I <laughs> like was I, in it. So I was before, we, before it. we even left to go get the chicken tender, we're still standing in the stands. And he had already said, like, I'm spinning. And, like, two minutes later, looks at me, and he was like, dude, this fucked me up. And I was like, well, just take it out and, like, put it, like, in the pouch. And he's like, I already did. (laughs) He's still just getting it. But then I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at him because we're in line. And he's just squatting next to me. And I go, hey, you want me? I'm just going to get you some chicken tenders. Is that cool? Couldn't even answer me. He was just silent, squatting down. I was just making sure. Well, so like we were at a thing. Like they sponsored the podcast. They they I do endorsements for them on the morning show. And so I was like, this is not a work event. We're here for fun, but like I don't want to make an ass out of myself. And like yeah. if I threw up, it wouldn't look like I just did a zen and I couldn't handle it. It would look like I was a drunk that just like, oh, that's that that's Alex got belligerently drunk is just throwing up. There were cops all over the place. It wouldn't have been like I wouldn't have been able to explain my way out of it. So I was like, you know what? I just need to get the poison out. And I went and I just shoved my fingers down my throat and made myself throw up. And then like met Pat. He was instantly better. He was like, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm way better. Way better. And then then we we took some pictures with some people and Pat, like after one of them, he was like, well, I can't remember. Was it 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 took pictures of this? But you were like, if you had only talked to him 10 minutes earlier. Yeah, literally (laughs) like 10 minutes before Alex would like, she like because she comes up. Oh my god, are you Alex? Are you Alex from ninety four five? And all I could think is, it literally, if this was ten minutes before, he might have said, "Nope, oh, no, man. no, I'm not. No, I am not Alex." But then, like, yeah, she would have thought I was fucked up, and would have been like, "What's he on? Like, what's he, like? I don't know." It was weird, and maybe I need to. You know, I got to work on the, the Zen top. It, it, it would have been good, though, if I was there and people were like, so you fucked up. I would have been able to explain. No, he just he took a Zen and he's not used to nicotine and mixing that with other things will just fuck your shit up. Like anybody that knows, like who's ever had a dip or anything like that when they were 16 and already had had like five beers and it's their first dip, you know, all of a sudden you mix nicotine, tobacco, whatever it is, into a buzz that you already have. It's you mix a foreign buzz into a buzz that you're already experiencing. Your head is just gonna fucking spin. 
every fucking time until you're used to it. And hey, you handled it like an adult, though. Like it was fucking you up. But then you finally you made the adult adult decision. Let's expel everything in the system and reset. That was That's what you got to do sometimes. I was and you were rest. you were fine. Sometimes. Five minutes later, you were fine. You were back to normal. It just it got yeah. you. And it does that to people. It'll get you. Yes, I'm a Zen bitch, dude. Like I thought I was like, everybody's doing Zens right now. I'll hop in, I'll be one of the boys. Nope. You gotta do it sober. Like Zen yeah, is good for like maybe. you're just like kind of tired at work and you pop one in and it's like it's like a um not adrenaline boost, but uh what's the word I'm looking for? Attention, I don't know. Energy. It's like an energy boost. Like you don't feel it like all of a sudden you're like, ooh, it's just all of a sudden. Yeah, I did not you feel just, any you, energy. You have that. you have a little bit more because you're mixing a buzz with a buzz. We're like, it's not even really a buzz, but it is nicotine into the system. It ma- nicotine does make you more alert. It, it it can help you focus more. But when it's when you're already buzzed on top of it, it's a bad one. But like if you just threw mm-hmm. one in at work when you were a little tired one morning, you would be like, damn, all of a sudden I'm I have it. I'm ready to go. I feel like I'd be like, I'm tripping balls. If I did not. If you took a six, if you took a three milligram one, you'd be fine. Yeah. Zen's not cool. Me, me on Zen, not cool. Apparently, um, my last not cool is a shared not cool with Pat, and it's just like we were in Uber hell on Saturday going to the Roughnecks or the Sabercats game. We went, and we had never been to a Sabercats game. I didn't know how much we were going to be drinking. We were responsible, as mothers against drunk driving would want us to do, and we were like, "Hey, we're going to leave a little room for Jesus. We don't know how drunk we're going to be getting. We don't want to risk anything. Let's Uber." So we Ubered, and the first Uber wasn't that bad. They didn't really speak English. Not a problem, though. Picked us up. Everything was fine. And then we get to the well, hold on. We, we got to tell the story of that one. Because she she pulls up to kind of where it tells you to and goes, is this fine? And we could both tell it really was not quite the destination, and it was at least a little bit yeah. farther down the street. But we're both bitches. And we were like, yeah, this is cool. And then we just... And we had, had never walk. been there, so we thought it was like, okay, it was probably around the corner or whatever. Maybe she went, like, maybe she just pulled in or whatever. We, we had to walk, like, five minutes to... Yeah, we actually it was, like, another the- half a mile we had to keep going. We literally could have been like, no, can you just drive forward for 30 more seconds? We were in a Quaker's desert, <laughs> and we were just like... Mm. Well, we're both bitches. We're both non-confrontational Yeah, bitches. I guess I'll just walk. I'll just walk. That's fine. That's five-star. Yeah, whatever. And then we realized no other cars or anyone was around us at all. We could see the stadium lights. We could hear all the stuff going on at the stadium, but it was very far away. So we had to walk there. So that was our first Uber hell experience. Not that bad. And then our, our getting home Uber experience was really the Uber Ooh. hell because I'm not saying that this woman should never be allowed to drive an Uber. I gave her a five-star review. And I still tipped her. Um, but this lady is not technical, no, technical, technologically savvy enough to be operating. I mean, she had to be mid 60s. I don't know. We, we, you, you put your, hey, I want my ride. Pick me up here. Very simple. There's like a GPS thing to work where, where you are when you hit that thing. Fine. This lady then, it's like it. Like what I what pisses me off about Uber is since we're not cool anyways, is like when like they get there, it's like you have two minutes or they're fucking gone and we're gonna charge you for the ride. I was in three minutes away, four minutes away territory for 30 minutes with this lady. 20, like, definitely 20 plus. It was like definitely three 20 minutes, plus. Four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, three minutes, four minutes, three minutes, yeah. four minutes, two and minutes. Was- Three and minutes, she was at a point where minutes. she was at a highway intersection where she had to go left underneath the highway and she would have been there in three minutes. Instead, we're watching her go right Not. off of the highway and then immediately into a parking lot. And then it looked like she sat in the parking lot for 15 minutes, not moving. I'm not convinced she wasn't sitting in a parking lot. Yeah, I we, also did, called... we also did see that there was a Burger King in that parking lot. There was a Burger King. We had no proof. There was no bags in the car when she finally it, it got It didn't to smell us. like Burger King. She could have been dining in. She said there was like ambulances or something blocking the intersection. She said something like that. Yeah. Um, she still took forever to get there. I understand things happen, whatever. 
So she gets there and like, we're like, yeah, you're good to go. And she's, wow, oh goodness, I gotta accept my ride. And she keeps double tapping to like accept pickup <laughs> or like, like, like basically just saying like, I picked the person up. So she's double tap, double tap. But when you tap it again, it goes away. So she was doing that and then it was going just away. Kept and it. We're, we're both in the me... backseat like texting each other and shaking like half laughter, oh. half anger because she's double tapping the screen where the first tap is not registering because the second tap is like pulling it away it's canceling or something it. like that. And you're like, just no. I was like, just, just, just tap just it. Once. it one I don't time. think it's a double tap. And she didn't understand what that meant. So she kept doing it. And so then, then she, she just, like, then she just starts driving. Yeah. She just starts driving. And, and then she's like, Oh she, no, she pulls the U-turn and it's goes, making me go back to where you were. Well, no, no. Like, before no, that though, before that she picks us up, she's doing that. It's not working. She does like a little U-turn and we go, you just go right back out the entrance that you came in. And she passes that entrance. There's only two entrances at the park. It says exit with an arrow. And then, so she passes that one and starts driving towards the other one. And then passes that one. And we're like, no, no, just turn left. And she just won it. Passes that, rolls down her window to ask somebody in the parking lot how Even to get out. Even though we told her. Even though she's not listening to us. Two people are telling her. Finally, she turns around and goes back to the original one and starts driving away. But as we previously said, she kept double tapping. So she never officially picked us up. So then finally, as she's leaving, she parks at the end of the, I don't know what you call exit and goes, oh, it doesn't show that you've picked us up. But on her screen, there's a button that just says accept passenger or whatever the fuck it says. But we go, oh, you can just touch picked that. Picked up anyways. I was like, just say yeah. picked up oh, anyways. Pick up anyways. No, pick no, up no. Anyways. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. I've done this before. And I was like. No, like I've literally seen people do that. Like if I walk to the car at the rodeo and I like I don't want to wait in the line, I can walk to your car and then you can just say, except pick them up anyways. Okay. Like, no, no, no. I have to so she has to go back to like we were in the parking lot walking out. So she has to go back to the middle of the parking lot, come to a complete stop, stop, fiddle around on her phone again to figure that out, do the double tap thing again that won't work. And then she finally gets it to where where it lets her accept the ride. And then it still took like 10 minutes to get out of the fucking parking lot, man. We were in that, like, the whole Uber thing was, like, an hour and a half ordeal from, like, button to, like, us getting home, and it wasn't that far of a drive. And she just, like, if you were in, if, if there was a, a green light, she was slowing down at it to make sure she could stop in time for the red light. Like, she was the slowest driver. She fit every <laughs> old driver stereotype. And then she dropped us off, like, a mile from my house, or from my apartment's. And it we wasn't a bitches. mile, but she it was but far she did, again. It wasn't. We were just it like was, bitches again. We were just she like, She did stop. It was the apartment complex next to your apartment complex. It was not Still, that it far. Was far. It was but far. But this was before we ever left the parking lot. This was me and Alex. I opened up my phone and I see two texts from him. What the fuck, dude? It literally says exit on it. This was when she was just trying to figure out how to leave the first time. And I go, bro, it's so bad. It's getting funny. And he goes, no matter, no wonder she was late. What's her rating? 4.7. Lies. And then Alex gave her five stars. Give her I get, four. I don't, so, give her four. I so give, four, is, no. four is still good. Four is still good, but it'll drop the rating. If you don't she deserve five shit. stars. Yeah. And the funniest thing was trying to Alex work. Was, it's a gig economy. I don't want to ruin anybody's job, you know? I was calm. Alex was a little lubricated. So he was starting to get heated. When it just said three minutes away for 15 straight minutes. But I was good in the car. I didn't like it combative or anything. No, no, no. You were good in the car. In the car. It, it got to the point where both of us were almost like, just press the button. And she just wouldn't listen to us. If, if she was not telling Ugh. us a story about how or about a previous drop off she had that day, I would have thought it was her first Uber pickup ever, which would have been super weird timing at, you know, 11, 15 on a Saturday oh, yeah. for that to be your first Uber, but uh it was just Uber hell and it was like she was a nice lady. She was super nice. She was a nice lady. Horrible Uber fuck? driver. <laughs> Horrible fuck, Uber dude? driver. Uh like we, when you're in an Uber and they're going so slow that like, you just see every other car was passing us on the highway. And I, I just wanted to be like, just go. <sighs> and she it just it wouldn't end. It wouldn't end. That would be a, that's a good like version of hell. It's just an Uber that like you you get lost trying to find them. They keep missing your pickup. 
They can't say that they've accepted the ride. And then they're the slowest driver ever. And you just never get to your destination. That would be, that would be a good version of hell. That's going to be a and Jordan Peele out. horror movie in two years when they're like, Oh, this is the exit. And they just drive by and then the locks click. Uh, yeah, that probably would be. And so, then somehow so it's going to be, it's going to be a white Uber driver who steals their soul. I don't know. That's, it's going to be get out to Uber. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, Uber hell. That was, that was me and Pat this weekend. Which you, you have, you had one Pat. Or you have one more. Uh, oh yeah. My other one was just, I'm, I'm getting curb stomp gambling. I just, I'm just not doing well. All my bets. The dudes that I follow, I stop following them, and then they go on a streak. I'm like, okay, I'll jump back in, and then they lose. That's why you don't follow people's bets unless it's accurate if gambles. You just you have to educate yourself, and then you make your own bets. Well, I do. I do, and it's somebody who's made me a lot of money over the years, who's consistently won. So he went on a cold streak. It fucking happens. But, uh, yeah, and I just, just – and then fucking Purdue playing like shit and Houston losing, playing like shit. I just, I, I, I just left. I, I busted. My account went empty. I left busted. it empty yesterday. Even though it was a Bruins day, I didn't bet the Bruins. Of course, they fucking win. It's like the third Bruins game all year that I haven't bet. I bet every single fucking one. But, you know, it happens. I gave myself a day, reset. I'm going to reload tonight so that tomorrow morning I can bet the NCAA tournament. I'm going to lose all of that on the NCAA tournament. And when college basketball is done, I'll have college hockey and I'll be ready to go. But it's just been a, it's been a, it's been a bad month gambling. It has, uh, I've had to reload like three times in the last month. Usually I reload once every like 20, uh, two months. It's not been good for me, Robert. And then of course, baseball season is going to start and, you never know how to gamble baseball season early on, but you do it anyway. And just hope for the you fucking You reload best. once every two months? It's it's like 50 to 100 bucks that I'll put back on. Oh, okay, never mind. Like I said, I, I, I bet low amounts. It's all purely for entertainment. I, I've never cashed out gambling. Because, because as you have noted, I get drunk and I chase bets. And play blackjack. I know, I'm done with blackjack. I stopped now. like immediately. I've been playing poker and that didn't go well either. Uh, but I've stopped that too now. But that was also because I have no money in the account. But I'm going to stick away from that. Because I have all my fail safes gone. Well, I, I set myself a rule. I was like, you know what? You're only going to play one $5 tournament a day. And then that day I played a five, one, played another five, lost, played another five, lost, played a 10, and then played a 20 and lost the 10 and the 20 also. And then I had $13 left in my account and I put those two on a uh, Swedish hockey league parlay two team parlay. And I lost that. And that's how I busted, <laughs> you know, Pat, but like, Swedish I said, it's hockey. Like, but like I said, I, I'll, I'll look like 50 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks at a time. So it's like, you know, it's purely for entertainment for me. I'm not a good gambler. I know I'm not, I get drunk and I gamble. That's not a good way to gamble. There we go. <laughs> I don't do I don't do it to win. I do it to fucking have action, because I'm a goddamn endorphin addict. Yeah, you need the hit. I need the what? The hit. The hit. The head or the hit? Hit. Okay. I get what, I get what you mean. It's just when you first said it, your voice like digitized for a second, so I didn't hear it. Remix. All right, let's move on. <laughs> let's wrap this up. With the answers segment, this is uh, you know, we did the pre chem segment where we talk about things. Actually, hold on real fast, just I want to just spin this real fast while we're at it since we don't have an ad here this week. Um, Miami Heat go, Dwayne Wade, James, dude, Chris Bosch, Mike Miller, Shaq, uh, Alonzo Morning, dude, Goran Dragic. Oh, fucking Goran Dragic. Hashim the beat. I mean, he's a current player. And this doesn't really fit the game, but Bam Adebayo. It's just a fun name to say. Juwan Has, Howard. Bro, I forgot about Hashim the beat. Yeah. He's got the beat. He's got the beat. I don't know if you said Ray Allen, but Ray Allen. 
Yeah. No, th- these games are more fun for like old school players. So, like people have forgotten early 2000s. I mean, a lot of the heat because of LeBron James is like, oh, everyone remembers because they were just getting superstars. Yeah. Who who's who's uh who's the dude that's been on the team for like 15 fucking years? It was Juwan Howard. I don't think he is anymore. No, 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 no. It wasn't Juwan Howard. Was it not? Um oh god. This is gonna drive we we can't end it until I find it. Uh, because this is gonna drive me absolutely nuts nuts. Uh long time. Udonis Haslam. Yeah, Udonis, Haslam. Dude, he played till he was like 40 and he got like three minutes a year for his last three years. Ooh, Mario Chalmers. <laughs> oh, dude, Mario Chalmers. That's a pull. That's a pull. Played played at Kansas. Any oh, Miami Mario Heat that you can think of, Chalmers. Robert? No, all I had was LeBron James. Bro, Udonis Haslam was born in 1980, uh, and he was on the Heat. I'm pretty sure two years ago. I think he played till he was. It was either 40 or 41. It's pretty 20 awesome. year NBA career. All right, let's move on to the answers segment. That didn't have an ad, so that's just why I wanted to do one of those. But um, if you have any questions at all for us, you got a high thought, you want to pitch an idea to us. Maybe uh, you want some relationship advice, some parenting advice, anything like that, medical advice. We're basically doctors here. Anything you got, hit us up on Twitter. We're at Pass the Gravy Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. That's how we search for them. You can also email them to us, answers at passgravypod.com, or go to our website, passgravypod.com, and click the uh, the contact page, and then Jesse will forward that over to us. But answers, uh, hit us hit up on Twitter. That's the best way to go. It's at Pass the Gravy Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. Um, this is the answer segment. Well, if you just answered the question, why don't you just answer the question? Be honest, no big deal. Yeah, answer, answer the question. Don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. Yep, yep, yep. Why, 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 all right, we're going to start with Glamour Perry. She's at Glam for Life on Twitter, and Glamour says, isn't birthday cake's flavor just vanilla? No, it's icing. Vanilla flavor and icing flavor are different. The vanilla, the icing might be like, because I don't think icing is vanilla flavor. You know what I'm saying? There's like white icing, there's chocolate icing, and people say vanilla, but that's not vanilla. Like if you're going to think... taste vanilla and you taste icing, you're like, vanilla is very different. Well, because I was going to say, like, birthday cake flavored stuff doesn't taste like birthday cake does. Birthday cake, I think, does taste more vanilla-y. Obviously, there's different kind, but if you're just, like, basic bitch, sheet cake, birthday cake, nothing wrong with that. Not hating on that at all. But, like, if you just go to the grocery store, you're like, yo, I need a cake for Robert. Shout out Robert's birthday is next Wednesday. Um, We're going to have an early episode because of that. For Robert's birthday, putting it out early. But when we go get Robert uh, a, a sheet cake... It's probably just gonna be the vanilla kind, right? And that's gonna be birthday cake flavored. Just get him tres leches. Why? I don't really know what the difference is, but tres leches does fuck though. I would get you a tres leches cake just because I want a tres leches cake now. Yeah. Well, one, because you're Latin, and two, because I want to eat tres leches cake. It's delicious. And also, I can just steal some from work. That's the other plus side of that. Oh, hey, guess what? Look what I just found out. Some are it usually just means it's a creamier vanilla and some have a hint of almond or cherry in it depending on the manufacturer so the base what? of birthday cake is it's the base vanilla. but that's not the flavor i mean also because you get there's birthday cake birthday cake flavored vodka and there's also vanilla vodka so there it is a difference really birthday cake the flavor is sugar it's weird that's though the that flavor. Uh, isn't it weird that of all the flavors, like when they were like, all right, what flavor do we ne- need next? Birthday cake. What about just regular cake? No, it's got to be birthday cake. Okay, That's more what's fun. that like? Um, I don't Sprinkles. know. What was, last, what was the last birthday party you went to? And it's just like whoever the last like children's birthday party was, that's what the basis of all birthday cake flavorings was. If they had come to my birthday, it would have been cookie cake. Like chocolate cake could have been the flavoring you went with. It's crazy that it's birthday cake. Yeah, because every picture that they use of it when they call it birthday cake, it's a vanilla cake or white cake, you know, like angel food cake with sprinkles. So if you get birthday cake ice cream, it's just like chunks of cake 
of uh, like angel food cake with sprinkles. It's really so they can throw the sprinkles in to make it co- uh, colorful. That's why they chose birthday cake. I'm going to agree with Glamour, though. I think that birthday cake is just vanilla. It's just like fancy vanilla. It's not just vanilla, though. It's fancy vanilla flavoring. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm just disagreeing. That's the because really, what is it birthday cake really, flavor I'm, just I'm, vanilla? It's I'm arguing it's the semantics flavor. really. The flavor of birthday cake is is fancy vanilla. But also, I mean, I'm, birthday cake can be any. My birthday cakes were cookie cakes. That's not vanilla. vanilla. Vanilla bean. I, what's your favorite vanilla? I think mine is vanilla bean. Like there's like old time vanilla. There's regular vanilla. There's vanilla bean. I don't know what the difference is. I just so know the- I always liked vanilla bean. What's the vanilla? What is the bluebell call their vanilla? Is it homemade vanilla? That vanilla. Homemade vanilla, yeah. But they, all, I think they also make a vanilla bean. Well, the blueberry homemade vanilla vanilla flavor is my favorite okay. flavor. Of the vanilla. ones that come in the little cups that are the packages like vanilla and chocolate. Those ones. Homemade vanilla is great. <laughs> Power rank flavors of vanilla. Wait, there's more than one. Yes, birthday cake. One. <laughs> birthday cake fox though. There's like five, but they're all vanilla. But yeah, yeah. it shows it shows the versatility of fucking vanilla. It really does. Chocolate's also. When people very say, vanilla, "Oh, the sex was vanilla," I'd be like, "Oh, so it was great." Yeah, birthday cake vanilla or just regular vanilla. It was missionary. It must have been bomb ass missionary and hit the spot every yeah. fucking time. But I still think it's fancy. It's country club vanilla. Is what it is. It's fancy vanilla. It, the the birthday cake flavor is yes, it is vanilla, but just fancy. I would ask Great Robert question. his favorite vanilla, but he'll probably be vanilla's gross. No, homemade, homemade vanilla. Robert's a guy that gets it. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about Robert. He gets it. <laughs> uh next question we got is. Oh, we got a we got an emailed one in. This is from Del Acosta Senior, and he says. Congratulations, Alex, on becoming a father. I actually have a parenting-related question for you guys. Thank you, Dell. Dell says, how early can you add senior to your name? But aside now that my firstborn will be named after me, can I go ahead and throw that big SR after my signature now? I think I think <laughs> she has to be pregnant with the junior. That's what I was going to say. Like, as soon as she's pregnant, you can be like, I'm senior, bitch. But that, like, you can't just be like, I'm uh, Delacosta Senior. Well, uh, how's your kid? Oh, no, no, I don't have a kid. I just plan on it in the future. You can't do that. I love that, though. I love that you're like, you know what? what My kid will. But I love being like, my kid will be named. I love the, like, just planting your flag. Like, my kid will be named after me. But then if you have, like, a daughter, you have to name her Delacosta Senior. You mean junior? I think Dell could be a girl's name too, though. Yeah, but I don't. Know, I don't. I don't know if that's like a cultural name where no, people are like no Dell is a boy's name. I don't know, but I feel like Dell could be a pretty girl's name. But to be a junior, you have to have the exact same name as exact them, same. right? Yeah. Like so, like so, it couldn't be like delay. Like his name couldn't be like. Del- oh yeah, Delaney. Del- but- yeah, but Delaney yeah, so it could, could be, be Del. But she couldn't be like Del if her dad's name is like Delman. She couldn't be Delaney and then still be Del Acosta Jr. if he's not that. If that's not his full name. Yeah, I think it's gonna say it's gonna be the same name on the birth certificate. Cause like if I I, I am Alex Middleton, if my son was which I don't have like I don't currently have a son on the way, but if it was <laughs> Alexander Middleton, that would be me adding letters to my already last name. It would not be a junior. Or like if I had a girl, I couldn't name her Patricia, Patricia. and it had to be Patricia Dion Jr. Yeah, Robert could not. Even though my Roberta. brother called me Patricia my whole fucking childhood growing up. Roberta Hogg Barbosa. Jr. I couldn't. Na- I, I fucked that up. I should have said, I can't name her Patsy because it's not on the birth certificate. It's a nickname. But then we could call her PJ. Which PJ plays for girls and boys. It's it's rare for girls, PJ but there does. are girl PJs out there. PJ does play. Um, no, I like the idea of just just throw it around, dude. If you want to 
name your kid after you just go with the senior i love that i love that for you i think you have to name them junior though like even if it's different you have to name like i would have to actually name her patricia rainey dion jr like i'd have to have a junior as part of the official name i think then i could give myself the senior but the junior yeah. has to be on the birth certificate and people are like well, but, well we can't put that because it's not an actual title but no no i want junior i want her last name to be dion jr but people won't realize that i just love the idea that it is like no hey i'd like to change my name legally to senior okay well you when did you have the child I haven't had the child yet um Oh, so when will it, when's the child do? No idea. Um, Did you guys ever uh, like even discuss naming the girl Alex? No. Cause I always wanted Eli and I was like, if it's a girl, we can name it, whatever you want to name it. But like, if it's a boy, I want Eli. I want Eli. It's going to be Eli. Oh, so, so it was just straight up boy. I name it girl is yours. No. Cause Al is close to Eli. That was some discussion. <laughs> No, you say it's hers, but then you still try and put your. Well, I, absolutely. That's how I'm pitching it. <laughs> if I had to say it. And then middle names are such a fuck. Like, I don't know what to do with middle names. They're such like a throwaway name sometimes. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. I think Patsy's a beautiful name. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> We'll That's say. not even one that he's like, we'll say he's like, I am so against that. And I'm not even going to bring it to Emma because she would immediately go. No, we're not naming our daughter after that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even want to chance any of that rubbing off on our child. We well, leave a little room for Jesus name, on the middle names. I don't know. Just because you can make sick initials. Well, because it, it's like if you have no middle name or if you have four names, you're a serial killer. You got to have three names to have a shot at being normal. I don't have a middle name. I, and I'm so glad I don't have a middle name. Because then when your mom was mad, she couldn't yell at you with your middle name. Part of that. Well, my yeah. mom didn't do that. She would just yell, God damn it. My mom would yell, Alex P. Fuck you. And I'd be like, okay. Damn, my parents would just yell, get the fuck in here. Yeah, it always seems uh, like middle names, they are just throwaway. Like, no one ever calls you by that. I'll, I'll, there are a they lot are, of people out there that go by one. their middle name. Like, if your then first you name sucks, people of. go by their middle. So then or like your name, not even have a first name. I well, agree. sometimes sometimes it's a family name. Like, everybody in your family is named David, but everyone in your family calls you Jim. Because your middle name is James. Do you feel lied to, though, when you know a friend and then you like meet them and that's their middle name? You're like, wait, your real name is Jim? Mm-hmm. And I've been calling you Steve your whole life? What the fuck? Were you ever going to tell me? I knew people that like I grew up playing baseball with. And then all of a sudden they went to high school and I heard people start saying a different name. They went to a different high school. And I was like, wait, you can't just get to high school and change your name. Like former, uh, I believe it was Ottawa Rough Riders quarterback, Bo Mitchell, played with him growing up. His name was Levi. Levi. He was Bo Levi. His name was Levi growing up. And out of nowhere, he got to high school and it was Bo. And I was like, well, you know, as the quarterback of Katie High School, Bo plays a lot harder than Levi, but you can't just change your name, dude. But then he went by Bo Levi Mitchell for a while. Yeah. And, you know, he became a professional quarterback, so like. I guess it worked out. Guess so. Guess so. Um, all right. So I, I'm just going to say, yeah, go ahead. Nate, go with the SR to add the senior to your name now. Dell. Keep he, writing in. You got to wait until she's officially pregnant, though. I Disagree. think that's I think that's the actual Disagree. answer. Disagree. Whenever you want, bud. Robert Tiebreaker. The, there has to be a baby in there. Damn. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Gotta be a keep, bun in the oven. Keep participating, Del. It's good to good to hear from you, man. That was the first time answers to ask her. Uh, Mikey Paul, we just hung out with Mikey at the SaberCats game this weekend. Um, Mikey Paul is at it's just Mikey P on Twitter, and he says, "If June bugs are attracted to light, why do we only see them at night? And also, why are June bugs here in March? Because during the day they're flying up towards the sun. Yeah, at night they go to wherever the lights are." 
They're they're way up there in the air, dude. They're and we see them out. in March because uh, they're rebels. June bugs are rebels. They don't play by the rules. Well, March Madness. Oh, they're mad in June. Yeah, it's madness. This chaos happens in March, dude. June is their month, but in March they're just they're fucking sporadic. They're yeah. spastic. They're running around. They don't know what to do yet. Mm -hmm. June they figure their shit out. And then they know that the showers come in April, and then the flowers come in May. So like they're really just here early for that shit. Like they're like madness, flower showers, flowers. That's really what their plans are. And then in June, that's when they go off. Like I got fat boy summer. They they've got June. That's their season. Perfect. It's yeah, one month exactly. long, but they're just bugs. A whole month for a bug bugs. is a pretty good deal. That's like an hour of a bug. It's like a whole month. Bug no, bugs. that's like ten years to a bug. Pretty quick. Yeah. One yeah, one month is like ten years for them. It's pretty quick. No, but I'm saying like an hour is like a month to them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Great question, Mikey. Moment. Um, we had another first time answer to ask her. It's Brandon Dory. I went through the emails this week. I had we had a lot of unread emails. Uh, but Brandon Dory says, Power rank baths. He must have been watching the news this weekend. He gives us bathtubs, bath and body works, blood baths, bath bombs, and black Sabbath. Sabbath. Power ranking baths. I'm assuming because of Trump's comments. Robert, you go first. How rank us some baths, buddy? I'm going to go with bathtubs, number one. Only because right. I've, I've never lived in a place that had like a shower, just like standing shower. It's always been in the bathtub. So if I didn't have a bathtub, then I wouldn't be able to shower. I've never lived in one that had just a bathtub, bathtub. I have had the standalone showers, but it didn't have the bathtub. I've never just had the bathtub, bathtub, because that seems fancy. President William Taft would probably agree with you that, or disagree with you going that 1-1, one, because one, his fat ass got stuck in the tub. And that's why he's no longer president. Yeah. That, that no, that's been... a true story. He got stuck in the tub. <laughs> it's also true that he, he was very president. fat. Yeah, both true mm -hmm. facts. Both true. Next, I'm going to go with Black Sabbath. I like that. Number two. Solid pick. I like that. Number three. Bath bombs. Those things are fuzzy. You put them in, in a little water. Just... <laughs> You're like, whoa. Yeah, they look cool. Magic. Like I would I would never I don't think I would ever use a bath bomb, but like I would absolutely be the guy who just like, oh guys, look at it. And then you just open the drain and let it all go down. You're like, cool. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Let's do it again. the guy that anytime his girl was taking a bath, I'm like, you got to let me drop the bomb in. Can I do it? Let I want to do I it. Drop it. Let me bomb you. Let me bomb you. Beep. I'm basically a little kid that just wants to be involved. I just want to see it. Sam's niece had her like birthday party at like a bath bomb making place, and we made bath bombs. That was cool. Oh, and like cool little like uh, like you could pick shapes and stuff for them. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That was cool. Uh, then I'm gonna go Bath and Body Works. Number four. That's four. Yeah, that's number four. All right. Last time I'm gonna go bloodbath. That doesn't seem like a. It seems like it sanitary. could be bad. Yeah. And that is a negative connotation. Like, is it mine? Is it someone else's? I'd rather it not be either. Either way, there's lots of blood. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot of cleanup. Yeah. It's gonna stain. So solid, solid rankings. So you go bathtubs, Black Sabbath. Bath bombs, Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body Works, blood bath. Blood baths. All right, uh, I'll go next. I'll go Black Sabbath because they rock. Black Sabbath rocks. Um, number two is Bath and Body Works. I don't like that they try and talk to you so much every time you go in there, but like the smells are fantastic. The smells are fantastic. You know, I just get lost smelling all that stuff. Um, number three, blood baths. Just because it was a funny word and it made a lot of people mad this weekend. That's really <laughs> just top of mind. It it brought me great joy to see why that was what triggered, like why why that was what triggered it trending and then just seeing the outrage. Hilarious. Uh, number four, uh, bath bombs, terrorist connotation, even though it is fun to watch. I'm not going to use them, so it's kind of pointless. And then bathtub, I don't take baths. 
Don't take bats. Not against people that take bats. I just don't do it myself. I'm uh I'm I'm bored. I get bored fast. I get bored real fast. I'm like, well, now what? And you feel like you gotta sit in there long enough. I'm not gonna do that. It's not a bathtub guy. Um, so I'm gonna go Black Sabbath, Bath and Body Works, Blood Bats, Bath Bombs, and Bathtubs. What you got, Pat? Number one, just it's Black Sabbath. The Godfathers of Metal, the original metal band. A lot of people will say generals gathered in the masses. Fucking exactly. just banger after paranoid, banger after banger after banger. Fucking Ozzy Osbourne. One of the greatest, whether you want to call it metal rock singers, bands of all fucking time, Black Sabbath, number one. Number two, out of respect, I'm going to go bathtubs. I don't use them. Never really been a fan. I'm too big for them. But, and this is why I'm putting them number two in the Prohibition era and in Appalachia, bathtubs were used to make hooch. People used to make booze in their bathtubs. And God damn it, I respect that. So bathtubs are number two. Three, I'm going to go blood baths. It's just, I mean, it's a bloodbath out there. It's a great word to say. Yeah, it's a great it's term. Word. It's visually stimulating. And also in the first Blade movie, when uh, they're in the vampire club, the first vampire club they go in, they rain blood down from the ceiling from the uh, I guess water spouts, whatever you call yeah, them. Yeah, sprinklers. Yeah, so that was a bloodbath. And then Blade killed everyone, which turned it into more of a bloodbath. That was fucking cool as shit. Four, I'm going to go bath bombs just because, like Robert said, they're fuzzy. They're I've fun. never had one. I would actually like to try it. I got to get a very big bath to try it in, but they look nice. And uh, five, I'm going bath and body works just because I've never been. If it had been bed, bath, and beyond, it would have been number two for me because that was always the bed, place. Bath and beyond. Yeah, that was bed, bath, and beyond is where me and my brother used to go on Christmas Eve every year to buy my mother a Christmas present because we're pieces of shit children. The- that don't seen think on TV ahead. stuff. Oh, we would find some nice. We we're going to get mom a nice fuzzy blanket. And usually, I, yeah, I've talked about this many times. I think it was like four years in a row where I got her a foot bath because we couldn't yeah. remember what we got her the year before. And I'm pretty sure every time it was from Bed Bath Beyond. But oh. I never went to Bath and Body Works. So that's going five. All right. So I went I'll Sabbath, like uh, Bath, uh, Blood Bath, Bath Bomb, Bath and Body Works. Pretty solid, solid power rankings, and that was uh, that was a good one, Brandon. Very topical this week. Very, Very good this week. All right, let's wrap it up with our final question. It's from our boy Ray Mundo. He's been featured twice on the show now at K Mundo B on Twitter. He's the um the reigning man of the year from past gravy, I believe. So uh, from the gravies last year, but Mundo says, at what point does a nap become sleep? How many naps equal one sleep? This is a good one. I think six hours. If you lay down for a nap and you wake up six hours later, that wasn't a nap. You fell asleep. I yeah, it's too much. Yeah, I don't think I think because because I think most people would say six hours for a lot of people would be a full night's sleep. That is a full night's sleep. So that's why I think six hours. If five hours, you're like, damn, dude, I knocked out for five hours. Five that hours a long is, ass a, is nap. sleep. I don't know. I for you. Because you sleep way less than most people. But I think like if I got home at like, I don't know, let's just say for whatever reason, three, and I laid down and I woke up at eight, I'd be like, dude, that was a hell of a fucking nap. I think time of time of day you fall asleep to will also play into it. I think two to three hours is a nap. Anything more than that is sleep. Four hours. A four hour no, because I've definitely is... no. That's not. I've, that's a sleep. I think a sleep. four out for you because you only sleep four hours a night. Two to three hours you can consider a nap. Like going, like if you got off at five, you wake up at eight. That's a nap. You can call that a nap. If you wake up at at ten, and you got you got you went to lay down at five. That's sleep. You slept. I think a lot of people would say four hours is just a really long nap. We should put a poll out on this. One to four, or I don't know how we word it. What is the minimum hours of, uh, like, for a nap to become sleep? Three or less, four to five, six plus. 
Robert, what do you think? I think anything over two hours. That's a that's thank sleep. you. That's sleep. Two hours is not sleep. It's a nap. That's a nap. Right. So anything over that, anything that's over you're sleeping. That. You're sleeping. Yeah. A three hours is a nap, I think. No, that's why sleeping. I even gave you the three hour leeway. I think I would I was fine with two. I'm fine saying two hours is the max. But if you go three, I'll allow you to call that a nap. When you're telling me you're sleeping four hours, that's a full night's sleep, guys. The half a full night's sleep. That's, that's a not a nap. Cycle. That's sleep. But yeah. I think it's I think it's also like like I said, time of day. If you eat Thanksgiving and then you pass out and you wake up four hours later after Thanksgiving lunch, I wouldn't say I fell asleep. I think I took a four hour nap. He fell asleep. Naps. But I'm also I like when I sleep, I, I'm 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 a big sleep guy. I enjoy my sleep. I don't sleep as much as I should. But also, I, I feel like you have a skewed view of this, Alex, because you only sleep four hours a night. But a nap can turn into a sleep. But you can call a sleep a nap, but you're wrong. Just know, like, if you sleep six hours, that's not a nap. Even if you did it during the day, you sleep. No, six hours is definitely sleep. Right. Five I would even say maybe, sleep. I think, maybe four hours five. Is sleep. I think five might actually be the correct one because i think you can take four hour naps i've done it i did it on no it's a four hour sleep that's a four hour nap dude you can say that you're wrong though it's a sleep you guys let us know what you think because we'll probably forget to put out the poll let us know what how how long until sleep becomes and then uh, how many naps equal up to sleep i think you're just talking about sleep apnea at that point when you wake up 15 times during the night to piss or because you're snoring. I mean, two, two hour naps. That's a sleep. No, it's, you still haven't even hit the sleep threshold. No, you definitely have. Cause you've done it for four hours at that point. But also I don't think naps can equal sleep because I think if, you, if you're trying to sleep, but you wake up every two hours, you're sleeping. You're just bad at sleeping. Like even because I wake up and I toss and turn and I roll over, you know, you get up, you got to piss in the middle of the night. Luckily, I haven't hit that age yet consistently. Normally, the only time I have to wake up in the middle of the night to piss is if I drink a shit ton and I wake up. I'm like, my bladder's full. If I don't wake up right now, I'm going to piss my bed. See, I count. I don't I wouldn't count that as a nap. I count sleep as like this. The, like, this is my activity. I'm in bed. If you get up and go pee and you go back to bed, you went back to sleep. That counts as your sleep. I don't count yeah. that as a broken up part of it. Like if you sleep four it hours, should, it shouldn't be. Yeah, if you sleep five hours and you get up twice to go pee, you still slept. But you can nap for two hours. See, now I'm starting two to hours, think there's a there's a lot max. of nights where I stay four up hours. and I only have four hours to sleep. I, I see. Here's where I'm conflicted though. I think you can sleep for four hours, but I think four hours can also be a nap. Depending on the time of day you're getting it, can it only done, be one. It could only be no. one. And if it's this, if this it's, isn't Highlander, it is. It is though. You can exactly take a four hour. Here's the thing: if it's light you outside after three, it's 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 sleep. I think you can nap for four hours, but I think if you go to bed and you only sleep four hours, then it's sleep. You can nap for four hours as long as you know that you're really sleeping. For those four hours. I played fucking MLB the show longer than our sleep fucking cutoff is. I played for six and a half hours yesterday because it came out yesterday. That's a sleep. Which, by the way, sure. shout out, uh, comeback hit MLB the show. It's out. I forgot to put that in there. But awesome. yeah, I mean, I this I don't I, I think we're gonna get a lot of like uh, a lot of differing opinions on this because there's gonna be a lot of people that are like, dude, cr you're crazy. Anything less than eight, eight hours is not sleep and you're like well lucky you you get to sleep eight hours a night yeah it must be you, nice you well-adjusted asshole robert you're the sane one here though two hours is a nap i think we gotta allow three we allow three max anything over three hours is is sleep i will say yeah it's three has got to be the absolute bare minimum you can't say two hours of sleep you can but I think three hours you give a little you give a little leeway. That's the you hit snooze on the on the alarm that you were supposed to wake up for after a two hour nap. It goes to three, then you wake up and you're fine. That was a nap. in college. I used after, to like after drink with my sleep. buddies, go home, take a two hour nap, and then go back to drinking. 
like meet back up with them later on. Two so hours is a nap. Two hours officially. Is a nap. Yeah, I'm right. willing to say two hours of a nap, but long. three. You're kind of. I will freeze. accept. Kind of sleeping. I will. Anything after three is sleep for sure. That three is the bare minimum that I would accept for you to call it sleep, but I still want. I would not do that. I would not call it that. I would, and I'm right. So there you go. I'm always right. That was a great question, Mundo. That was a great one to end it on. And uh, thank you to everybody. These were some awesome questions we've had the last month or so. Um, keep them coming at Pass Great Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. I am at, at Alex J Middleton on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you follow me. Pat is at not Pat Dion on all socials. Robert is at Robert Barbosa zero three on all socials. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a ja 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 in the comments if you made it this far. Share us with a friend. Make them subscribe. Take their phones. Subscribe to everything. Go subscribe to the audio version as well. If you're listening to the audio version, subscribe to the YouTube. If you're listening to the YouTube, subscribe to the audio. Hit play on both. Please give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever else you listen to podcasts. Pass the gravy merch.com. Go load up on some dope Pass the Gravy gear. Um, good luck on all of your brackets. The beer sports, whatever. Pass the gravy bracket challenge. You can get in until about tomorrow morning. So hit us up. Uh, hit up Mike Brown underscore 2020 on Twitter. Let him know you want to be in the bracket challenge and then DM him or he'll DM you how to, how to get in touch with him. But the money it's $20 per person, the max amount of per bracket per person, it, 20, 20 bucks per bracket, three brackets per person max, but you can just do the one bracket if you want. And then the top three positions get a payout. I think the last I checked, it was over $600 in the pot. So go sign up and play some March madness bracket challenge against us uh, five star review on itunes spotify iHeartRadio, wherever else you listen to podcasts uh what was it? happy happy early birthday robert we're gonna put out the episode a little bit early next week so robert can celebrate so look for uh an early or a late tuesday night episode maybe and uh yeah have a great rest of your week but before we do that let's uh let's do some random celebrities what random celebrity would you like to go with birthday boy mike tyson mike tyson pat Ooh, I will go with Greg Maddox. Greg, Mad Dog, Maddox. I'm going to go Amanda Bynes. Go I was going to say Amanda Bynes. All right. We're going to start. Alexander Graham Bell's what we're on right now. David Crosby. Crosby stills Nash. One more time. Damn, again. nice. David Crosby. David Copperfield. <laughs> Are we going to get another David? Are we going to get another David? We got to do one more, right? There's no way it's another David. All right, uh, David Beckham. David Allen Greer. Oh, Emily Dickinson! That, that no. dude, that just trolled us. It was like Dick and you, son. Oh, fuck. They got us good. They fucking, they, they good. trolled us. The fuck. cell phone's always listening. Damn, one of these days we'll get it. One of these days we'll get it. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week. Have a great rest of your week. Remember to leave some room for Jesus. And so we talk to you next time. Pass the gravy. Yeah. Gravy gang 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 Baby pop the top and let it spread As we're listening to pass the gravy We're going fishing for your bitch today We're drunk in Houston And we go ahead and